Hey, hey, everybody. I see y'all. Is that James Phoenix? Hey, James. Yes. Memphis Hello. is in the house. Right. Shout out. Where, where are y'all? Where, where are you at? City, state, country. Where y'all at? Brooklyn, Arizona, Los Angeles, California. I, I, for anyone outside the state, this on this, I should know better. We in America, we should our cities and states out hard. Don't be on Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. I heard Minnesota. Omaha. I hear Minnesota. I heard Minnesota. I heard Minnesota. That should be Craig Chapman. Hey. All right. So let's, let me see. So we're um, we're about a hundred people right now. There's more people coming in. Let me just submit folks. Um, how are y'all feeling? How are y'all feeling? Good. Good. Excellent. Good. And I hope hopefully someone is. Gonna, I hope someone has brought something to read. A few of you. I have a story. I have a story. <laughs> I did. Is that for me? Is that for me? Yeah. It's a flash fiction, Kevin. It'll go down real easy, real fast. So just. Uh... <laughs> All right. So let's let's do this. Hey, Michelle Jones. I see you, MJ. The original hey. MJ. What's up? In the building. Yeah. Regan. <laughs> Regan in Minnesota. So, um, as we so, uh, wow, people are still coming in. Um, you got it. Um, today, you got it. You got it. Okay. Let's do this. Let's get started because it's already seven oh six, and I know we got. Uh, I want to go through some things that we did last week, and then I want to go through what we're going to, how we're going to proceed, because folks were asking me about structure and. Hey, I love y'all so much. I spent the last 90 minutes, two hours working on this workshop. So not just this workshop, but the next six workshops, how we're going to flow. Because y'all know last week was kind of a free fall. We just kind of yeah. did it, which was, did y'all enjoy last week? Was it cool? Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. So, but we are, we do need to have a structure because we got so many people. I mean, if it's going to be 175 to 200 people every week, <laughs> There's no way that 200 people could read every week. Y'all, y'all, y'all agree with that. So we have to. Uh, we're going to ration this out. I'm gonna explain everything, but let's let's do this first because um, since last week, uh, one of my good friends that I've known for a long time, literally, he's the son of one of my good friends, um, died. Young man, only about 31, mm -hmm. 32 years old, and so it was. Uh, since last Friday, I have been crying. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It's been a lot of tears, a lot of reflection. And, you know, we talked about last week how rough this year in general has been. 2020 has been a crazy year, which is part of the reason why I agreed to do this workshop. A lot of folks have asked me about self-expression and writing. So can we just, um, this is, has nothing to do with organized religion, no matter what you are. And even if you're atheist, agnostic, you all have the right to be whatever you are. But can we all just close our eyes for a moment and just take about um, what I'm going to do. Hold on a second. I'm going to time it. Let's take about 60 seconds and just, just breathe in through our noses and out through our mouths. Is that okay? Can we do that together? Yes. yes. Absolutely. That cool? Because a lot of times we do not know how to slow down, and I will include myself in that. Like, I just go. And how many of y'all find yourself eating lunch at like five o'clock and then dinner at 10 o'clock? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so let's hungry do this. right now. Right now. I heard I heard that. <laughs> let's, let's yeah, admit that and I'm very hungry, trust I'm, me. Let's let's table the food for a second. Let's just think to the fuck So 59, 50, just close your eyes, breathe in. Through the nose, out through the mouth. Today I keep admitting people we're, we're breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just do it on your own. We got 40 seconds left. You know, a lot of times we do not, myself included, know how to slow down, how to pause, how to be still, how to be quiet. Um, I meditate and pray every day, but um, sometimes, you know, we just need to be still. Keep, close your eyes, just in through the nose, positive thoughts, put the toxic negative thoughts out. Remember what we said last week, y'all, I am a writer. I am a writer, I'm a writer. And I love the fact that y'all were hashtagging I am a writer all over social media. I need to trademark that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yes, I, don't, I don't own that. I don't own that. But keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing. Even if you're laughing, that's good. That's good. I've been crying the last few days. Like I said, I just lost a dear friend. Life is not easy. 
This year has been rough, but we're going to get through it. Let's do it for about 15, 20 more seconds. And please mute your phones or whatever's around you. We're asking folks to just close their eyes and just, because we also talked about mental health a lot last week, which is why I decided to start every session now with a meditation and close every session with a meditation because we, uh, we need to figure out some practices that will help us with our mental health. All right, 10 more seconds, nine, Five, three, and only when you're ready, start to open your eyes real slowly. Um, and as an affirmation of self-love and self-care, just give yourselves a round of applause because you are important. Um, let's do this. Um, <laughs> just as I, and you know what, this is part of what I wanted to say to you all. Let me just send someone the Zoom link real quick. They're like, Kev, I can't find the Zoom link. I'm like, son, it's all over the, it's all over the registration. And y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of y'all did it today too. Um, just give me a second, y'all. Y'all all right out there? Yes. Yes. Meditation's cool. We good with that? Just start yes. with this. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So, let me just go to my notes because I really I, I'm taking this very seriously. Um, first of all, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for being a part of this because you didn't have to be here. There's a lot of stuff happening on social media every single day, as we know. Uh, I'm humbled and grateful that y'all are participating like this. Um, we are up to 125 people. Okay, this is beautiful. We had like 180 last week. I want to thank you to the New York New York Poets Cafe. As always, they're my part, our partners with this. I want to shout out Daniel Gallant, the executive director, Jason Quinones, Chris Lopez, and my teammate, Sadea James, uh, who is also from Brooklyn like I am, and she's a dynamic young writer who I'm so happy to be working with now. Um, why are we doing this? As I said earlier, because people have asked. I see you, Michael Carter. How are you? We're doing it because people have asked um, several times throughout the year, Kev, you know, how do I get published? How do I get my blog out there? I'm stuck with my book. I'm stuck with my screenplay. I'm having difficulties with this poem. I've written 14 books. I'm working on my 15th book, which is a biography of Tupac Shakur, which will come out sometime uh, in the next year or so. I've written from all, for all kinds of publications. Uh, this year alone, I've written for New York Times a few times, Washington Post Magazine, some other places. Um, and I've taught writing all, all around the world. So writing is important to me. As I said last week, writing is as important to me as breathing. And I just, you know, uh, we got we to gotta create communities, you know? And so even if you are not a published writer, that's okay. If you've been published many times in different forms, that's okay as well. We've said uh, since last week, um, um, please let's just all respect each other as equal in this space. Can I just get a shaking of the heads or waving of the hands for that or? Yes, you know, yes, uh, yes. The reason why in these workshops is where I can give feedback. I'm going to leave some time at the end of workshops. Uh, today, we're going to edit a little bit the internal agenda we have with the last part of it where I say open the floor. We're going to let we, if folks have any writing questions, let's just ask them at the end of the session. But um, I, I want to be honest with you all. I cannot uh, read folks work one on one outside of this session. I am overwhelmed with work um, in my own writing projects. But inside of this space, you got me for two hours every week. Is that is that cool, y'all? That's good. And for free, That's can we say free? <laughs> no, free, free. Thank you. See you, Kathy Nelson. I'm shouting people out out there as I see them. I see you sharing. Um, everyone, please make a note because you all have asked Carla Radford and other people, where's the Zoom link? Where's the Zoom link? The Zoom link is on the registration page. It will not change. The Zoom link will be the same for every single workshop, but you do have to register for every individual workshop. So let folks know that the Zoom link will always be the same. It's always on that registration page that the New York and Post Cafe set up. Um, all you have to do is register for each individual workshop and then jump in. Um, can we say, our one of our mantras from last week is safe space and what else y'all know what? No judgment. Safe space, no judgment. One of the things that came up last week several times is people being in writing workshops, people being in different kinds of spaces, be it, be it at the high school level or the college level or a, a, a community-based writer, writer's organization and people dissing them and dissing their writing and, and making them feel kind of insecure or very insecure about sharing their work. And so I can't guarantee 100,000% that this is going to be a completely safe space, but I am asking you all, please, I'm actually begging you all to come with love. Just come with love and kindness and compassion. 
You're not going to like everything. You're not going to like everything I say. You're not going to like all of my work. I'm good with that. I don't like all my work. Some of my work really does suck. Some of my work really is terrible. But I also believe in, you know, let's be constructively critical as people are sharing their work today and every, every week after this. Is that cool, y'all? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And so yeah. then what I want to move to, and Zaya, can you, um, can you just put it up so we can read it together uh, on the screen? We're going to do a screen share really quickly. It'll just be one. I promise it's just the only one. But I want y'all, because I we took serious notes. I also got notes from people like Dr. Jerry Ward, who's one of my mentors, one of the great scholars out of the South, was at Tougaloo College in Mississippi for years, also Dillard University. Um, just waiting for this to come up. We're up to 135 five folks, and folks are still coming in. This is beautiful. Hey, Lakeisha Washington, I see you. <laughs> who's that Syracuse in focus in the dark? Who is that? Okay. Are you in Syracuse, New York? You upstate? That's what's is up. That, you talking about me? I'm not sure who that is. Yeah. <laughs> is the screen shot up? <clears throat> One second. Okay. No. Just give us a second, y'all. Folks who are just coming in, we just did a meditation for a minute. We're going to do that at the beginning. Hey, Leslie Cigar, I see you. Queen's finest. There you are. Thank you for joining us. Leslie's one of our great dancer choreographers. She's working on the book and she has a lot of stories to tell. Um, and she's one of the folks I had conversation with earlier this year about how important it's for us all to tell our stories. Can everyone see the screen? Just make some noise if you can see the screen, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. so basically um, ignore the first part. We did the breathing meditation already. And like I said, we're gonna close with it. Ignore, we shouted out the New York and Post Cafe. We thank them. Please go to their website if you wanna support the New York and Post Cafe. They're one of our many nonprofit organizations. And, you know, historically, I mean, so many amazing writers have come through there. I was fortunate enough to come through there in the early 90s as a young poet. Uh, I already talked about why I'm doing this, uh, that I can't read work one on one about the Zoom link. Uh, let's go down to what we discussed covered in week number one, which is what is a writer, who is a writer. And as I said, you know, um, a lot of us say things like, I think I'm a writer, I'm kind of a writer, I'm an aspiring writer. You know, and what we said last week, y'all, which is so beautiful, um, um, just own it. I am a writer. I am a writer. I'm a writer. Because, you know, no one can tell you who you are except yourself. Are we in agreement with that? Yes. yes. So whether you've been published or not, if you write in any form, if you think about writing, if you feel like there's something that you can do with the written word, then just claim I am a writer. Um, you know, we talked last week about the necessity of understanding various relationships between writing and mental health. I'm going to be honest with you all. We uh, went back and reviewed everything. I think the word mental health came up probably 30, 40 percent of the time last week, you know, uh, for a lot of reasons. People talked about stress, anxiety, depression. As I said to you at the beginning, I just lost a, a dear friend, uh, unfortunately, tragically, to uh, suicide uh, the other day. And, and so and he was an artist. He was a creative person because those of us who express ourselves in any kind of form, would y'all agree that we feel things in a way that a lot of people don't feel? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. true indeed. Yes, indeed. So, yep. you know, we agree that we should tell our stories. We should write from our experiences, whether you're a screenwriter, a blogger, a poet, whatever kind of writing you do. But I also want to offer that we've got to have some sort of balance there, which is why I meditate and or pray every day, which is why I do. I work out every day, which is why I believe in yoga. I believe in you know my spiritual practice, my religious practices, which I will never try to put on anyone else. But I know that it helps me to be balanced emotionally because writing is hard, y'all, especially when you start bleeding on the page, which is what some of y'all will be doing as you're reading your work today. Um, some people said, people said several times last week, writing has helped or saved yeah. my life. Y'all remember that who were here last week? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a heavy statement. That's a heavy statement. You know, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have writing, if I couldn't write this poem, if I couldn't write this book. And that says to me that we uh, live in a world where we don't have enough spaces where we can express ourselves freely, you know. And I'm saying to you all, we have to create those spaces, which is why this writing workshop is not my writing workshop. Can we say our, our workshop? Can we say our workshop? Our, our workshop. workshop. Our workshop. Our workshop. <laughs> because other than me talking in the beginning, it's collective. We're going to share. It's a democracy as best as we can make it. We talked last week about the importance of keeping journals and reading, writing something each and every day, and also exploring structures and styles of many genres of writing. I can't stress this enough, you all. If you are going to claim I'm a writer, if you're going to tag people and say hashtag I'm a writer on social media, you got to read. 
You know, you got to read. You got to read. There's no intent around that. If you're writing poetry, you got to read poetry. If you're writing an autobiography or memoir, you got to read autobiographies, memoirs. If you're writing for a newspaper or magazine, you've got to read the best writings out there. Um, and you got to read writings that are not that great because you learn from even the stuff that's not that good. If you're a screenwriter, you watch great films and you watch films that are like, eh, and then you start thinking about how could I have written that script th differently? The same thing with a play. Um, is this making sense, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And some folks said they still keep journals. Some folks said they started and they stopped. Some folks said they did it years ago. They want to come back to it. I personally do not write every single day right now, but starting October 1st, when I got to do the last big push, for my biography of Tupac Shakur, I have to write every day. I'll be up at four or five in the morning because that's the only quiet time I have. Even if it's only 30 minutes a day, y'all, 15, 20 minutes a day, make a commitment to putting some words down, you know? Because otherwise, if you think of it like, well, this script has got to be 120 pages or this, 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 this autobiography or this novel that I'm writing has got to be 400 pages, you're never going to get it done. But if you do little bits by piece, piece by piece over time, your script is done. Your play is done. Your book is done. You know, we talked also about the importance of, of, of being passionate about language and writing skills. Spelling and grammar is critical. Again, no judgment. We, can we say it again? No judgment. No, no judgment. judgment. No judgment. No judgment. Who you are is who you are, you know. But at this, from this point forward, we all, myself included, have a responsibility. How can I get better with my spelling? How can I get better with my grammar? What do I need to read on a regular basis that's some of the best writing in the country where I can actually grow? Do I read The Undefeated on ESPN? Do I read The New Yorker? Do I read Esquire? Do I read Vanity Fair? Do I read The New York Times or The Washington Post on a regular basis? Do I read Lucille Clifton, one of our greatest poets? Do I read, go back and read Maya Angelou? Do I go back and read Toni Morrison? Do I read Hemingway? You know, what do I read that will help me to grow my writing and my language and, my language and writing skills? Um, we already kind of talked about the necessity of reading widely. I read everything. I, I can't speak for anyone else, but every morning I get up, I'm reading. When I go to sleep at night, I'm reading. Um, the importance of knowing all kinds of writers. Don't become just obsessed with writers that you may know. Uh, one of my favorite writers ever is someone named Henry Dumas, who most people have never heard of. Oh, yeah. One of the great, great poets. Um, you know, he came out of the same period of the 60s, the Black Arts movement, like Amiri Barak and Maya Angelou and Sonia Sanchez and Nikki Giovanni, people who we would know. But I also gravitate to those writers who are dope that people have never heard of. I think that's important. And we also talked about, which we didn't put on here, forgive me for saying that, like, I certainly want to be rooted in writers who are African-American, that's who I am, yes. but I also got to read Shakespeare. I got to read the Irish writers, the Jewish writers, the women writers, the straight writers, the queer writers, writers of all different identities, Native American writers, Asian writers, you know? Mm -hmm. I talked about how I barely read any women writers the first 20 some odd years of my life, and the wow. huge impact it made when I started reading Gloria Naylor, you know what I'm saying, and Zora Neale Hurston mm -hmm. and people like that. And so we got to read, and and we got to read with a purpose if we're going to be writers. Is is everyone cool with that? That recap? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we can we can lose that uh, today, please. And I'm going to move on to part two, which is again, thank you, the New York and Post Cafe. I want to keep shouting them out because they're one of our historic nonprofits. Um, you know, folks have asked Kev, how can we support you? Just my new book, When We Free the World, is on Amazon and Apple Books. That's it. If you want to support it, that's what you can do. Um, again, whew, I'm sad because I just lost a friend, you know, to suicide, an artist a couple of days ago. Um, you know, but um, we got to also uh, celebrate life. I see my cousin LaShawn on here. Hey, LaShawn. Um, she's trying to lean in the cut. Shout out to Boston. Shout out to Boston, even though I hope the Miami Heat win, but I'm just saying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and 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 uh, shalom to my Jewish sisters and brothers. Assalamu alaikum to my Muslim sisters and brothers. I know we're in the middle. We just the new, Jewish new year just passed. Shout out to folks, Samson. I see you out there. Um, RLA, are you there? Are you there? I'm here. Okay, real quick, y'all. I, I need you to do me a favor. So, so, I, so Dad, do me a favor. Can you put the book cover up for a real quick second, really quickly? Just one quick second, please. The cute baby. Mm -hmm. He's so handsome. So I met that young man when he was five years old. And guess where I met him at, y'all? His mother brought him to a book signing mm. of mine when he was nice. five. That's and right. you see him in the middle with the, the yeah. he's, he's way more stylish than I am. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, my, that is my little friend, 
Lexington, who was five, five years ago, who just turned 10 yesterday. Oh, uh, happy birthday, Lexington. Lexington graced me by being on the cover of that book. That book is inspired by a famous photograph by Richard Avedon of Julian Bond and other black and white civil rights workers in the, in the 1960s. And Lexington and I have been working together for the last year. He is a genius. He's a genius. He's a genius. Lexington, I love you. Happy birthday to you. I just want to shout Happy you out. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. I got something coming in the mail for you birthday. later this week, Lexington, for your birthday. birthday. All right. Birthday. All right. So we got to get back to work, y'all. I just want to shout him out because we got to also honor life while we have it. Is that right, y'all? That's right. Yeah. 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 All right. So really quickly, it's 724, and I want to get to the readings. And we agreed to two minutes each. Here's how it's going to be very random. So what I want to do, everyone, because we got so many folks who've said they want to read, we got six more workshops to go uh, this week and then and obviously the next five weeks. We're going to, I'm going to randomly pick 15 people each week. You know, just raise your hands via the chat room and I'm just, just be ready. As, as, uh, <laughs> as, as Tiffany Haddish says, you know, be ready. She ready. They ready. They ready. Just be ready to read something. Hey, Vinny, Maggie Janelli, I see you. How are you? Good. Uh, um, you know, but before we get into folks raising, well, you can actually start raising your hands now and I'll, I'll start calling on folks. Anyone want to reflect on anything that has been said today or last week, just in terms of writing, <laughs> writing process? How are you feeling between last week and this week? You know, um, hopefully you didn't have as rough a time as I just had uh, the last few days, but how are y'all feeling out there about the writing process and the mantra of I am a writer? What, what's on your hearts and minds real quick? Just about 10 minutes, just for open floor. Can we do that? Yeah, I'm inspired. Okay, who's speaking? Say where you're at, please. Um, Zainab, Zainab, Auburn, Oregon, Washington. Oregon, yeah, how are you? I'll piggyback on my buddy Zainab, Lakeisha from Portland, Oregon. Um, after the class last week, I started exploring why I avoid writing and I realized it's a fear. And so I started like thinking about why am I, why do I fear writing? Hmm. and just started just like jotting down some ideas so it helped me to start analyzing what is keeping me from really digging deep into what's keeping me from doing something that is inside of me that that is a part of who I am yeah and just kind of breaking it down and that also took it to other things that I avoid and I realized I avoid creative endeavors that I'm really good at mm -hmm. because I have emotional reactions to them when things don't go right Mm. and it really pisses me off so like when I'm sewing and I mess up and I have to take the stitch out and I start throwing the stuff across the room the the, the fabric and you know having fits about it so that emotional reaction is overwhelming sometimes and so I think that's why I avoid those things okay thank you and I want to I see Safia Bendeli out there want to shout you out I am. Um, hey, this is Glory B. I'm all the way down in Florida. Hey, everybody. Glory, Glory B. Hi, Florida. Hey. 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 Richie from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico. I you guess. guys definitely lit a fire under me. And um, so much so, I, I'm a teacher at a high school. Um, Title I, very low economic demographic area. And I actually went to the principal and asked her, why do we not have creative writing as a as an option nice. oh, wow. Wow. Um, you know because especially nowadays uh i think these kids need an outlet yeah and they need somewhere to put their thoughts and their feelings um so you guys definitely lit a fire under me <laughs> and i thank you and appreciate that wow and i love that and let me say it again i mean y'all this is not my idea this is not something that i created this has been writing workshops forever we simply are bringing it to zoom and decided, hey, this is what we're gonna do for seven weeks. Um, and if it extends longer a little bit, we'll do that if people wanna do that and have some other ideas. Anyone else wanna share? Uh, before yeah, Jeff, we I just wanna say, cause you know, me hey, Jerome. and it's Jerome, what's going on brother? Hey, um, You and I connected afterwards and one of the things that was important to me, yes, we had 180 people in here, but yet it felt small and intimate. Mm -hmm. And yes. because of that, for me, I walked away with, yeah, this is gonna be for me and you know, I'm going to be writing a book. So I sat down and finally started putting the structure of what it is that I want to write into place. And then different parts as they came to me, I yeah. started plugging in with respect to that structure. Wow. Thank you, Val. Yes. Love it. Awesome. Hey, Jay. 
Wow. Anyone else want to share? I see, I see Eartha Watts out there. I see Har Harlan Writers Guild. Anyone else want to share? Just how I, you feel? Who's speaking? I, I, Kimberly Jenkins. I just want to say real quick, I'm not going to talk because I know I'm going to Kimberly Jenkins? Yeah. Hey. I just want, uh, hi. I just Ohio. Ohio. Yes. Miami, yes, cow town, not beaches. Um, um, I just, I just want to shout out real quick to, to Glory V. Am I saying your name right? Glory V Ortiz. Yes. Glory v Ortiz. Yes. Um, I just want to say I wish we could connect because I have this whole thing in my spirit about freedom writers. I know that's been done before, that's but right. you know this concept of not teaching children of color for me specifically African American children but children of color, immigrants of color, how to write, because writing teaches them to think. And I really want to connect with you on what you just said, um, because I've taught special ed, and my special ed students, middle school, they were some writers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I just think, I, I have this thing in my spirit and my mind, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it yet, but I hope we can connect at some point. And thank you again, Kevin, because again, like I said, this saved my soul. I look forward to this. Thank Send you. me your email in the chat. Yeah, and yeah, please, please network with each other. Please connect with each other. I see you, Billy Johnson in California. Shout out to California. <laughs> Angie Lawson, I see you out there, California. Uh, anyone else want to share just how you're feeling uh, about this I process? Do, I do. This is Who's Michelle speaking? Jones. Michelle hey. Jones. Hey, hey MJ. MJ. Hey. <laughs> hey, Kevin. First, let me say thank you so much for this, giving us all this opportunity. So this is so awesome. And hey to all my fellow writers in the building. I love that, um, fellow writers, that's right. <laughs> <All out. laughs> so I just wanted to say really quick that when I left here last week, um, it made me think about writing in such a positive way that I said to myself, I will never speak negatively about me writing anything. I will remove that fear from, yeah, yeah. from my life and no matter what I do, what I, what I write, because I'm a, I'm an overthinker. I will write something and will change it up 500 times before <laughs> I even let anybody hear it. <laughs> the piece I'm going to today, I, I read it to my cousin. I read it to two different people because I've never read it to anybody outside family. Huh. So like, mm. I'm reading it to them. I'm like, oh, I got to change that. My cousin's like, just leave it. Because when you wrote it, that was what you were feeling at that moment. Just leave it. Just leave it. So I, I made a vow that I will, whatever I write, I'm going to write. I will never speak fear over it. And I will just think positively about writing from that's, that's that point on. Hey, Kev, that's just, just so you know, Michelle is one of my co-founders of the Buy Black for Life group. I didn't hey, know if you knew that. Oh, wow. That's hey, Jay. That's what's up, what's up hey. family? Hey, I see Shyeen Van Cooten, one of Brooklyn's finest, Red Hook in the building. What's up? Uh, I know Brooklyn represents hard up in this piece. I appreciate y'all, all the Brooklyn love. Shout out to my home state of New Jersey as well. You know what I'm saying? There Anyone we go. I want to share before we start opening up the floor to people well, reading. Hi. Let me just ask this. Who's speaking in what state or this city? This is Carla from hey. St. Louis. Yes. St. Louis. Hey. Yes. Okay, so what if you're writing about your life, but it intercedes into someone else's life mm -hmm. and you're writing about this other person mm -hmm. and you don't have the anatomy to, to, to write about their life, but their life intercedes into your life. Mm -hmm. When you're mm -hmm. writing about your life, how do you handle that in mm -hmm. a in a way that is not um, how do you handle that? You tell your truth with love, and you tell the truth about people around you with love. Um, I have two words for y'all, uh, Carla. You just you made me think of James Baldwin. James mm -hmm. Baldwin. Um, people think of him strictly as an essayist, but some of the most brilliant autobiographical writing in essay mm -hmm. form that we've ever seen in world literature, not just American literature, or just Black American literature, just period the world, is Jimmy Baldwin. If you just read The Fire Next Time, that really short book, the uh -huh, first, I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The first is the letter to his nephew, and then the second piece is the longer piece that starts off talking about his childhood, his father, that relationship. 
he had to tell the truth. Um, I grapple with that because a lot of my work is autobiographical mm-hmm. as well, which means my mom is always saying to me, boy, stop putting your bu- our business in the book. <laughs> <laughs> but I, this is in the street. Yeah, I've, been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've <laughs> been, that's been my struggle this week because I, I did, I, I, I'm a, Say I have, I have been doing it with love, but that's what you have yeah. to, you have to, I mean, we have to tell our stories. I mean, part of being a writer is having the courage to push through stuff that makes us uncomfortable. You know, my goal is never to denigrate my family at all. Everything that I write, I feel like is a love letter to my family, but I do need to understand who are we? Where do we come from? How do we become mm-hmm. this? And how did that shape, how did that shape and affect me? The same thing with the communities that I come from or that I live in. You know, Mm -hmm. and I think that as long as back to the mental health piece, as long as you're constantly also working yourself and your writing is not some sort of vendetta against people, you're trying to. Oh, no. Yeah. Not you in general. Yeah. And I'm like, you have to tell your truth no matter what. You know what I'm saying? But do I have that right? That's that's been that's what's Mm -hmm. been that's been knocking me in my head. It's your you story. It's your right. story, Carla. Who yeah. said that? Who you said have to your tell story? your story. And if it hurts somebody else's feelings, maybe don't mention them by name, but that's your story. That's your story. From your perspective. That's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. In my, um, in my you book. You got to give yourself permission. You right. have, thank you. You have to give yourself permission, which is you why I give yourself truth. permission to tell, to tell the story. Yes. You have to. You have to. You have to. When you look at some of the greatest Autobiographies ever been written. My Angelus, I know where the cage bird sings. Uh, we talked about um, uh, uh, Angela's Ashes a week ago, the great Irish American writer. God, why am I drawing a blank on his name all of a sudden? Uh, help me, y'all. Frank McCord. Frank, Frank McCord. McCord, thank you. <laughs> I mean, those are very personal stories about their families, mm-hmm. but they had to tell the truth because when you tell yours, remember what we said last week, y'all, for those who weren't here last week, when you tell your specific story, it actually becomes universal because no matter what the person's background, if you are truthful, they will see themselves in your story. Mm-hmm. They will connect with it. Yes. But also in telling your truth, you're freeing yourself, Carla, mm-hmm. and everyone else. When you tell your truth, you are, it's liberating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I believe part of writing is like, how do I move forward in this journey of life or am I just going to be stuck for the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. You might be an artist if you're not trying to constantly free yourself. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah? Mm-hmm. No doubt. Yeah. Ka- Ka- Carla, you know okay. what? Today, today on The View... Joy talked about this very same, I'm not, I'm sorry, not Joy, Sunny Hostin talked about this very same thing because she had just written an um, autobiography and she said her mother didn't speak to her for a week Wow. because of the fact that she had involved, you know, family mm-hmm. information in there that they've always kept silent. And she said they had to talk through it and work through it. Now her mom has come around to understand she had to tell her story. That's oh, right. that's so. Because mm-hmm. I have that episode taped, and I didn't watch it today. You'll and see it. for you to bring that forth tonight. Like mm-hmm. that's that's it. Yeah. Just that's it just happened this morning. So yeah. The fact that you yeah. That yeah. You know, because I've been battling with that because of a certain circumstance with a certain individual that is in my book, and I am like, is it right for me to publish this and? bring this person's name into light when I don't have the right. Like, I haven't well, asked her. Well, you know, I think one of our workshops, and I forgive me, I don't have the workshops in front of me right now, but one of them will be about the business of writing. I'm pretty sure of that. Anyone got the flyer right in front of them? What week is that? About getting published, getting a book out? What week is that, y'all? Anyone? I think it's next week. That's po- poetry's next week. I do know that for sure. Oh, writing okay. poetry. I think it's in October, the second to the last week. So we're going to get to this, you all, but in my autobiography, The Education of Kevin Powell, a lot of the names are real people because I wanted to tell the story, tell my story. But in certain instances, I did change the name because I'm like, one, I'm not trying to get sued, keeping it 100 with y'all. You know what, <laughs> right? you know what I mean? Because some of may have been sensitive. And then I also may have changed some of the uh, surroundings, like if they were from New York, I would say, no, nah, they're from California, whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you got to think about this. The same thing happens with play, with films and plays if you're writing something that's autobiographical or sometimes we merge characters. And so I think, you know, that's a conversation that we can have, you know, when we get to writing books and publishing a certain kind of way, you know, do I say these names? If it's a famous person, if it's a public figure, quote unquote, that's different. But if it's it is a famous person. Well, then that's a different conversation. Yeah. And re- remind me, um, today, let's make a note to... Um, 
bring to folks when we start talking about getting published, um, you know, some of the things we need to think about in terms of if it's a famous person, what are the boundaries of what we can and cannot say and do? Generally, you can pretty much say whatever, unfortunately, uh, about public. Because it's already out there. It's already been yeah. said. And, it's and already you, been so you don't have anything to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. Just tell the truth. Tell your story. Is the person alive? Yes. Okay. Cause, yeah, one, cause, one is and one isn't. Because if the person is dead, th then that, then dead people can't sue. Exactly. One, one person is dead <laughs> and one person is I mean, very much alive. Your estate can't sue. That's so funny. What? Dead people can't sue. Dead people can't sue. But let's let, let's do this, y'all. Hey, everyone. Let's let's. Uh, it's seven forty. Carla, are you good for now? I'm good, babe. I'm good. Okay. I'm love. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. Thank all you. All right. So we're at 150 people. What I said for folks who just came in, what we're going to do every week, starting, we started this week, is a um, open meditation just to kind of still ourselves. You know, everyone has busy days. A lot of stuff is going on. The coronavirus is still here. Oh, we've lost tragically at least over 200 <laughs> points. God bless you. Salud. Whoever Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> um, and we're going to each week have 15 people do two minutes. Two minutes, not five minutes, not 10 minutes, two minutes. So we can, and if we do this every week for the next uh, six weeks, we will get in at least 90 people sharing their work. Are y'all mm. cool with that? Yes, yes, sir. yes. Now I'm looking at it right now. We've got 149 people in this room. Last week we had 180. So it, there's no way we're going to ever be able to get to mm -mm. everyone. And I know some folks may not be comfortable. What I'm asking you all, hey, Tanya Williams, I see you out there. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Kevin Scott, I see you. Um, what I'm asking you all is to please, if you are, re even if you read one, if you read once, don't try to read again. We need different people every week. Can we agree to that, please? So we're fair. Yes, and, yes. and then two, after each person reads, I'm going to give feedback and then a few people just respond as well. If you have any constructive feedback, constructive, constructive feedback, you know what I mean? And then the last thing I'm asking folks, you know, please, 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 please be mindful of the time because we want to get in as many people as possible and be fair to everyone. And so, and what I'm going to do is just randomly. But should you keep it to a time limit? Yeah. Because if you want I can time. Week, we agreed as a group last week, two minutes, two minutes, you know, um, um, and I should have said this this week and I apologize. Well, there's no way we can do it, but read it slowly. I may ask you to read it again if you read too fast and everyone just listen. And I'm taking notes every time someone reads, I'm asking you all to consider doing that as well. And just say the title of the piece, if it's untitled, say that. Again, say your name, where you're from, but also let us know what genre of writing it may be that you're writing in. Someone, anyone, everyone's okay out there? You okay out there? Who was sneezing or coughing? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to call, y'all ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start with Fareed. I'm putting you on the spot because you said you had something for us. Fareed, are you out there? I, I'm out here and elated is what I am. My goodness. <laughs> um, you know, That's my man 50 grand right there. He's just happy. <laughs> I, I was just saying, I was, when you said random, I was like, oh, no, I've always lost at casinos. It's happening all over again. But now I'm at Kevin Workshop. In Kevin Workshop, the house works for you. And I like that, I like that feeling. So I, I thank it. you. Thank you so much. So I promised you all brevity. What a what a laugh. No, so let's so I got you a piece of flash fiction. It's like a little espresso shot. And I was I'll, I'll uh, sh what should I do? Should I just Here's what I want you to Fareed, stop. I want everyone to pause for a second. One of the things I learned from the New York and Post Cafe years ago, whenever we tried to preface what we were about to read, there was a man named Steve Cannon, rest in peace, Steve Cannon who would yell out, just read the goddamn poem. That's what he said. <laughs> forgive my language, I'm quoting him. That's not me speaking that <laughs> So I'm asking y'all to read the piece. Just read it. Because if you introduce it for five minutes, then you lost your time already. Perfect. Right. It's, yeah, I've, set, I've put it on the, I put it in the chat for everyone. The oh, Tall oh. Man. Oh. The oh, Tall no. Man, a story from above and below. Above. He'd been watching The Tall Man for a week. By now, he had memorized his daily routine. Wake up, gather the goats. As they grazed, the tall man went into the cave and would stay there for 15 minutes, sometimes a half hour, before wandering back to his hovel. It was the only time he was blind and deaf. When the tall man went into the cave, how he hated those moments. The officers in charge asked, what is he doing in there, under that mountain where the enemy was known to hide? They asked questions, but they all knew. He could still remember his elation when he first saw the tall man on his screen a week ago. 
haggard, but he knew who it was, even through the digital glare. He watched, working overtime. He was desperate to prove that just because he could understand their words, it did not mean he was one of them. Moreover, he so wanted to be the one to do it. After all, he had found the tall man. Finally, word came from above. It was over in a second. Clean shot, he thought. No bug splatter. Below, wake up, gather the goats. He had just moved to the valley. The bombings had destroyed his village. He promised his remaining family that he would come for them when all had been set up in the mountains. The cave seemed perfect, so calm and protected. Each afternoon, he walked around the cave, knowing that they would be safe. As he gathered his goats, thunder cracked. End. My story! <laughs> the, the, uh... Very nice. Wow. Cool. So I have a, Very I have a... Octavia Butler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For Reed, is, it, is it meant to be science fiction-like? Yeah, I wanted to. This was based on the first... Uh, on the first case of successful drone killing in the war on terror from the U.S. side, the someone <laughs> someone thought they saw Osama bin Laden, and he, his name was the Tall Man. In fact, the first killing from drone warfare, Kevin, uh, was was a mistake, and so this story was inspired by that mistake. Wow. That mistake. Wow. That's beautiful. Wow, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. piece of writing. That's beautiful. That's absolutely wow. beautiful. See, my my first love mm -hmm. as a kid, uh, Reed, was fiction. <clears throat> I love. I regret that I've never written anything since high school really and i uh, just thank you for sharing that are you is it going to be a novel is it a short a part of a short story collection what are you going to do with it i just i just had this idea for i saw there was a flash fiction contest and so i thought that should be fun you know i i always think the most powerful thing in cinema is the point of view shot kevin because it gets into people's you know uh, eyes. So I thought this could be a great a way to kind of uh, vacillate between us to us across the spectrum of power from those who watch and those who are watched. I love that. How, how many words is that piece for Reed? I think it's under, I, th I think it's under, let me, I think it's under 200. It's a very short piece. So people under, people know what flash fiction is out there. I know we write in different genres. Mm -hmm. It's, it's quick, eight, 81 words. Only wow. 81 words. Wow. Wow. You know, and that's something, that's one thing, we're going to talk about this, especially next week when we do poetry, like, you know, and, you know, how do we write short pieces that are impactful, and then how do we write long pieces that are impactful? How many of y'all have a problem writing short pieces because you just feel like you got to put it all in one? I have a short, yeah. I, I can't do under a thousand words. Who said they can't do under a thousand words? Who's that? I, me, Marianne Sanctuary. I can't do under a thousand words. It kills me. Wow. Nah. Where, what, what John, where are you at and where, what genre do you write in? I normally do op-eds. Okay. Yeah, for like journalism. And they always want me to do short pieces, but under a thousand words, it kills me. I can't do it. Well, I, can I say something? Um, can we remove the word can't from our vocabulary as writers because we can do anything. And trust me, I hate writing work at op-eds as well. Um, I think I said last week when Chadwick Boseman died, I, I went to CNN and said, hey, can I have 1,500 words? They said, no, you can have 700, make it work. And I had no choice but to make it work. And so, you know, one exercise that we should think about, one of my favorite forms of writing is the haiku out of the Japanese literary tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. topics, because it forces you to write short pieces. You know what I mean? And I just think it's important for us to, I mean, for me, what you did is inspiring because it felt like it was longer. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did. Wow. Definitely did. Whatever genre you're writing in, I want to encourage you all to please think what, you know, you and Shereed was kind of referencing Shakespeare. One of Shakespeare's most famous quotes is, brevity is the soul of wit. Mm -hmm. now, what mm -hmm. does that mean? Keep it short, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Try yeah. it. Yeah. Anyone else, any other feedback for Farid? I think that's a beautiful piece. And like Farid, I think you should continue dope. to write those kind of pieces and I hope it becomes a short story collection. Seriously. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you. I, and, I mean, and you have I mean, a great voice too. You have yeah, a great you, voice. You got a lot of shout outs on the voice. <laughs> oh, you know, I, 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 be careful. I'm going to explode in a, in a, in a, in a, in a burst of happy confetti. Thanks to everyone. <laughs> but it, 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 but it, it, it's, thank you. It's so lovely. You know, as I told you last week, I study movies. And so I'm always like, I always, I'm very interested in how movies encourage us to feel 
across a different spectrum of power. So this flash fiction, uh, which uh, you know I I I realized was a uh, was such a, it was a very different experience for me. So to write in a, in a few dozen or a few hundred words and try to get some, some power of what I feel from these stories and from you know, seeing from one end of a spectrum to another and experiencing that's right. that. So, that's, so it's very exciting and, and uh, elating to hear that this, uh, this different style from my usual is, a, is a, a resonant. So thank you all so much. Two things that are inspired by Farid's reading that I'm going to go to the next person. Um, one, um, is it Britta in Toronto, Canada? Shout out to Toronto, Canada. I wish I was in Toronto right now. I got to say, I love Toronto so much. T-Dot. Um, Shakespeare's quote is, brevity is the soul of wit. Brevity is the soul of wit. William Shakespeare. Um, and then haiku challenge. Uh, we got a hundred and fifty people in here. I'm gonna challenge all of y'all. Haiku is first line is five syllables, second line is seven syllables, and the third line is five syllables. Five, five seven, five. I want everyone to attempt somewhere during this workshop, during this uh, six workshops we have left, to write not one, not two, but three haikus. I don't care if you're a poet or not. Try. It. Sorry, Sorry, that one's easy for me. <laughs> okay. Are you a poet? For me. <laughs> okay. I, my poetry doesn't ever, I can never do long uh, stem poetry. Is that, but, who's that speaking? Is Lou Jared Cooper? No, who's no, speaking? Something. Oh, that was Alexis Coleman. Hey, Alexis. Hey. hey. No, I never can, I practice in haiku, so, but I can't ever translate that over to my op-ed essay writing. I, you I just think use I, the word can't again. How do you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I'm starting over. I'm, okay. I'm working on my, my tape. So I tend to write longer in my essay, uh, op-ed type writings, and my poetry, because I lose interest so quickly. Well, then I'm going to challenge you all. If you, whoever said writing a haiku is easy, I want y'all to write three haikus about three different subjects of things that happened in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> That's the challenge. Different subjects? Three, yeah. Yes, we can, class. Three different yeah. subjects. <laughs> we can. <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, we can. I thought you said no homework. Well, I lied. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I'm doing it? If y'all keep saying can't, I'm going to keep adding stuff to do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I mean, for me, yeah, it's a beautiful piece I'm, that I'm was 81 words. Yes, it's there. So, mm -hmm. think, I mean, what we, if we're going to keep saying negative words about what we can't do, come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Right. We got to try. We got to try. Mm -hmm. Have I ever read the biography? The Tupac biography, I've never written a biography in my life. I have to figure out how to write this biography. What does it mean? I got to read all the best biographers who've ever existed. That's what I gotta right. do. I gotta That's figure right. it out. I can't say I can't do it. You with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. MJ Michelle Jones is next, and please, I'm asking 15 people. People, I'm gonna call 15 people each week, so just be ready. MJ, you ready, Michelle Jones? I am. Ms. And Chris or Sadea, can we actually not put me on the screen, but the person reading as the focus point for each? Can we do that, please? Can we do that? Thank you. So I want to I want all us to focus on the person who's sharing their piece. And thank you all for having the courage to share to raise your hands, because this is not easy to get in front of people and read. That's a nice sofa. Here you go. <laughs> oh, here. It's oh, my dad. And um, I decided that I'm going to be present in this workshop system here. So I'm reading. OK. I'm not reading in front of people ever. OK. Love. Oh. Yeah. I had sis. Have you ever thought to yourself? If I could go back to my younger self, all oh, the changes I would make to my life. Looking back on our lives and the mistakes we made, we may say to ourselves, if I could relive that day over again, would I have made that choice? Living a life with regrets is never productive. It keeps you stagnant because you constantly ask yourself, did I make the right decision? Could I have done something differently? What if I went left instead of right? The endless questions in our head that causes us to doubt and question every choice we've ever made in our lives. What if you could go back in time and do it all over again? Would you kiss the same person that ended up hurting you? Mm. Would you have gone to that party where you ended up in a fight? Mm. Since going back is not a possibility, you can only move forward using your past experiences as a reference point for your present and your future. Wow. I have spoken to many different people who constantly reflect on their past and they live in a constant state of regret. Mm -hmm. Why? Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Come on, sister, with that. And that's your okay. first time ever. And folks, can you please, if you have background sound, just mute when someone's reading, please? No, I needed that. That was nice. OK. Um, wow. Your first time ever? My first name. time ever reading in front of people. How do you feel? I feel great. That was really, really dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you guys really are dope. dope. You guys make it easy because of the no, the, the no judgment. You guys are dope. The energy is amazing in here. So you guys make it really easy. Oh, uh, that's awesome. That was awesome. You did what, a great what, job. What, yep. what, yes, you did. And you're, for someone who's never read in public before, let me tell you, uh, it is not easy to speak or read in front of people. I don't care if it's Zoom or not, just in front of people. That's not easy. Um, what genre would you consider that piece that you wrote? I'd never even thought about it, so I don't know. Okay. It has a poetic form, but it also feels like prose, like an essay, you know, mm. and it can go in a lot of different directions. I think you have to decide, you, well, you know, it could be a prose poem, you know, right. because okay. poems can feel like essays, but they're in poetic form. And if you decide to take it toward poetry, the only thing I would add to it is like, let's bring up some metaphors, some alliterations. Someone mm. help me out there. How do we play with language? You know, I mean, one right. of the oldest things we've ever, we've ever, all of us have heard when we were kids, roses are red. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, so blue. Blue. <laughs> you know? And so, and so are you. Yeah. Or think about <laughs> Langston Hughes's probably his most famous poem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does deferred. it like, deferred. like a raisin in the sun? Mm -hmm. When you start to hear yeah. Michelle, everyone words like like as mm -hmm. that's saying that we're about to give you. We're not going to tell you that the ice is cold. We're going to describe yes. the, how the ice is cold. Does that make sense, Michelle? Yes, it does. Yeah. Let yes. me point out something. What stuck out for me? I just put this in chat. I said at Michelle, girl, you said go into a party and get into, into a fight. Why did that stick out to me? Is that, your, is that your reality? You know what? Those are the things that you think about when you look back. You was like, if because you know, sometimes there's always that thought of maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe I shouldn't go. <laughs> right, right. But I'm glad you left it in because folks also, just like we shouldn't use words like can't, as we just talk about what kind of writing we can and cannot do, we don't we're not even willing to push ourselves. We should also not censor ourselves. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, there's a difference between censoring and self-editing. What Tony Morrison talks about brilliantly, self-editing, because you should at some point become your best editor when you go back and forth. And we're going to talk about rewriting throughout the course of these six weeks. But when you are in your own, when you hear, the, when you start saying, I can't say that, and you, I mean, you don't even give yourself a chance mm -hmm. when we censor ourselves. And so writers should not just automatically, because it's like silencing your own voice. And we talked about it last week. Right. Why are we here if we're not going to use our voices? Why are we here? Right. And so, Michelle and everyone, your life is important. Everyone here is a unique, powerful, special human being. No one has had your journey the way you have. No one has your, your ability to see, to feel. If you, if you have any of those abilities, the fact that you're alive, no matter who you are, no matter what your ability or disability or any of it, there's something that is unique to you. Mm -hmm. and your story is unique, so you got to tell it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was also very relatable. Like as you were reading, Michelle, I could certainly see myself in what you were saying. So I thought that was, um, yes. yeah, even the party, like I could think back on some of them that I may not have wanted to go back to, but I'm really glad you, you shared that story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for the feedback. It's amazing. So right. um, it, sounded, it also sounded like uh, self-help, like a lot yeah. of self-help books. Exactly. If you think exactly. about your life. Yeah. And some of the best self-help books, I think y'all would agree, are the ones where people actually put their lives into mm -hmm. it. You also yeah. learn from their journey, mm -hmm. you know, how to be self-empowered. Am I right, y'all? Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so that's what I mean, Michelle. It can go in different directions. I said prose and poetry. Y'all just said self-help. Self I didn't even think about that. Mm. Hey. Well, when I was listening to, I'm sorry, it's uh, it's Zenzele. Hey, um, Michelle. Hi. I was hey. thinking about how when in some people when they hold on to things uh, and always think what if what if mm -hmm. it can manifest itself in you know okay. mental you know mm -hmm. yes disability when you're holding on to all of that. So when you were reading it, I was thinking about mental health as well you know mm -hmm. just how mm -hmm. these you know too much regret compounded for a certain person can manifest itself in you know negative ways and and yeah. then it's cycling back to how this is a form of 
of self right. like care and yeah. catharsis to be you know writing about it rather yeah. than just yeah. staying in that place of like oh my god what if what if like what if you decided you didn't want to read or what if you right. like, <laughs> read, like, right. that. Right. and that was amazing thank you you're welcome and, and again everyone i want to just encourage you all um rewriting is a big part of it so just consider, you know, is there something else I can say with this piece for Reed or Michelle? Is there something else I can do now that I've gotten it off? I've gotten some feedback. Are there other things that I'm thinking about as I'm hearing the feedback from people? Um, we got, for those who are just joining us, um, we said every week we're going to do 15 people. We've only gotten through two. So I got 13 <laughs> people to go. Um, Angie Lawson, are you out there? Evangeline Lawson. Angie, hey, are you there? Uh Hey, I'm there, but come back to this. I'm pulling oh. it right now. Okay, I'm gonna keep going then. So maybe I can... hey, hey, Kevin. Yes. Maybe what you do is name, name the person you'd like to actually um, to speak, and then name the person who's who will be on deck. Okay. Right um, Brother D, are you there, Brother D? And then after Brother D, I saw I just saw a hand up. Um, hold on a second, can Mr. Kevin. Yeah, yeah, Clayton Pelham. So the brother Dean Clayton Pelham. I am actually very new to this. Um, this is my very first class. Oh, wow. I, Welcome. I, thank you. Thank you. Did you Welcome. just call me Mr. Kevin? Did you really yes. call me? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> well, it's just Kevin or Kevin. Uh, okay. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Your sister. Now we're Mr. Kevin. Where are you from? Where are you based out of? Uh, I'm, I'm coming from uh, from Cleveland, Maryland. In Super Maryland, Prince George's County, Maryland. Maryland. Oh, ah, PG County. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wanted to ask, well, one, I wanted to say thank you uh, to Michelle and Farid for uh, sharing. Um, awesome start to this class. Uh, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to the rest of these weeks to come. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned thinking of your writing um, in genre. I don't necessarily tend to do that. I mm -hmm. tend to allow free writing to form and into whatever genre it's going. Is it best? Is it a is it a great practice to to begin thinking in that way of saying, okay, how do I how do I want this to go? Like, do no. I want this to be a excellent genre? question? Okay. Excellent question. Um, I just write. Sometimes, like like I said last week, what I do, um, play in. Can I call you Mr. Clayton? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Clayton. <laughs> CP, CP, CP. Um, yes, sir, CP. In, in my iPhone, I, I have a note section where I have, I just write any word, like phrases, words come to me, I put it in there. It used to be back in the day, my little notepads. Yeah. I don't know where it's going to go. Sometimes it turns into a poem. Sometimes it turns into an op-ed or what we call a blog. Sometimes it might be a long form essay. You know, I don't know where it's going to go. You know, sometimes it might be an idea for a play that I'm working on, you know. Um, I just say, right, get it out of you, get it out of you, you know, get it out of you. And then and I'm reading the chat room too, y'all, y'all are right, editing, re -ed rewriting, 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 and then you begin to feel where it may go. And it's a personal choice for me, Clayton, and everyone out there, I love poetry and essays, or what we call blogs today, more than any other genres of writing. Those are my two, that's what I love, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, you have to decide for yourself, this is the kind of writing that I really want to do. And some people can write, you know, when you think about Langston Hughes, Langston Hughes wrote poetry, he wrote essays, he wrote fiction, he wrote autobiography, he did translations from Spanish, other languages, you know, he wrote children's stories, he wrote a column, you know, he wrote the simple stories. Uh, Langston wrote, uh, uh, opera. Hey. he did musicals, he did, um, you know, he did librettos. Yes. I mean, he, he just did everything. Um, when you think about James Baldwin, people don't realize James Baldwin didn't just write essays, but he also actually wrote poetry as well. There's a poetry book called Jimmy's Blues out there, you know, um, and so you got to really decide what you feel comfortable in, Clayton. No one can do that for you, but I want to bring it back and reconnect it back to reading. If, if you read a lot, you'll start to realize, well, this is, might be where I want to go with this because I love the way Bell Hooks writes. Or I love the way Hemingway writes fiction, you, you know, and I want to do what they're doing. For me, it was falling in love with Bell Hooks, James Baldwin, Norman Mailer. Joan Didion, I was like, I want to write essays, you know what I mean? And then the poetry also because of the New York Post Cafe, all the great poets that came out of there, the Black Arts Movement, the Harlem Renaissance, the beat writers like Ginsburg and Kerouac, that's when I settled on poetry, you know? So you, it's really a personal choice. No one can dictate that, dictate that to you, Clayton. Is that cool? Yes, sir. Can yes, you sir. read your piece then? Or are you not going to read a piece? I can, 
I don't have a piece. I can share. Oh, you just want to talk. Okay, right <laughs> on. <laughs> okay. And Brother D, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get brother. And Clayton, thank you. That's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And come back, please. We need you. Absolutely. I will be. <laughs> okay. Brother D, introduce yourself. Where you at? Uh, my name is Derwin Brown. They call me Brother D. I'm from the beautiful city of the east side of Oakland, California. Oak Town. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I, love, I miss the Bay Area, man. Man, we miss you. I'm, I'm you a, I'm a, at Berkeley High with the Brothers of Talented. We'll be reaching out to you. Yeah, man. I love the yes, Bay sir. Area yes, so much. I mean, I love California, period, but I miss the Bay, man. I really miss y'all. You know, I'll be back out there soon enough. So what are you going to share with For us? Sure. What, genre, what kind of writing, brother? Uh, I'm not sure what genre. Uh, this is kind of a piece of something that I thought and uh, oh, my life and write. Uh -oh. you know, please mute your phones, please, <laughs> or whatever it is that's ringing. Please go I'm ahead. Trying to capture please. my life and uh, like each decade of my life, and this is just one of the reflections. It's kind of almost like written in the style if I was doing a one man show. Okay. Okay. So um, talking about the city of Oakland. The B word echoes off into an almost magical tone. This was the infamous intro line to one of my favorite childhood songs called Dope Fiend Beat by a local rapper and hometown hero, Todd Too Short Shaw. I remember trying to mimic his cold streets of Oakland mantra with as much preciseness as I could. Seeping right into my cupped Radio Shack headphones, I could almost picture myself standing on East 14th Street corner posted up and making the entire world come to a screeching halt by calling out this powerfully deadly word. You see, I'm not even about to begin to act like I'm blaming Todd's music for my mentality. I developed by women, particularly black women at a young age. There are numerous songs in a plethora of genres that have all objectified women in many forms and fashions long before hip hop came into being. I won't even bother going into details at this time. The deeply rooted damage that religion, science, and society as a whole has placed upon women as the problem is a much bigger issue. I was surrounded by pimps, Max, D-boys, and the like during the most formidable years of my life, between the ages of seven and 16 years old. I was told and shown daily that women were toys to play with at your discretion and disposal. Oh, I, I witnessed some of my hood mentors and even some oh, family oh, mentally, oh, physically, yeah. spiritually, and emotionally abused their women, girlfriends, baby mamas, and uh, regularly. I was told that this was, quote unquote, how a nigga that. stayed on top of these bitches. Control was the goal, by any and all means necessary. I used to literally freeze in awe upon seeing some of these dudes backhand slap a woman so hard her bangle earrings flew clear across the other side of the street. A witness her being pushed out of a moving car, punched in the face like a boxer, or stomped out on the sidewalk for not quote unquote staying in her place. I couldn't help but look them in their sad eyes, tear streamed and often ble bleeding faces. So weird. I wanted to cry for them, but couldn't dare. Real niggas don't cry. Child growing up, what must this do to like? One Wait, second, I'm Brother D. Um, Folks out there, can you please I'm mute your you. mute your mic? I'm not. <laughs> Folks, please mute your mic. Please mute your mic. Someone's Karika, can you mute yourself, please? Karika Nalti, can you please mute yourself? Please. Someone's reading right now. Sorry, Brother D. Great. Yes, literal and statutory. Most of the D-boys I knew always had a quote-unquote young tender on the team. Most likely had a chick his age that he already had a couple of kids by. But quite often, he also had to have that pretty and thick little 15, 17 year old girl that was deprived of that solid father figure to be an added toy in his toy box. Most often she came from a broken home and could, and could be found at Eastmont Mall or MB Mall walking around during school hours. The attraction to the flashy lifestyle and perceived freedom from school and shitty personal home lives was far too irresistible for some of these girls. These guys would buy them food, take them to the movies, buy them an outfit, some shoes, even teach them how to drive for the first time. Where these girls thought they, were, thought they were being empowered, they were really being entrapped. These guys were always, were and always are predators. Weak shit. Yeah, I said it. Wow. 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 That was so, so, um, hey, folks. Folks. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Folks, um, it's 807, so I want to keep moving through it, but D Brother D, that was powerful. Um, and folks, mm -hmm. what we're going to do from now on is we're going to, when someone's reading, we're just going to mute all the mics because we can hear stuff yeah, we don't need to be hearing. Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of personal stuff we don't need to be hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Brother D, what inspired you to write that piece, first of all? Mm -hmm. I work with young people and I often, my, they want to know about me. And so it's like, of course, they, like you were talking about the 1800s, I'm 47 now. Mm. And I work with high school youngsters. And so we're always juxtaposing 
they want to know what was the same and what was different about being 15 or 16 years old mm -hmm. back in the 80s as opposed to right now. And most of who were my quote unquote, um, not necessarily heroes, but role models were what folks call street people. Mm -hmm. But in an ironic twist, and this, that was just a piece of a longer piece, one of the first people that ever told me that I was intelligent and smart was a pimp. Wow. He constantly reminded me of this. But at the same time, always sort of threatened me to not get into that street life. Ironically, it was this weird dynamic that we both had that although he was doing something that was negative, he was the first person that would come to the point that I literally be like, why do you keep telling me this? He was one of the first people that would that pumped that to me that I was smart. I would always repeat this mantra about you're gonna be able to do whatever you want to do. Whatever you don't ever let nobody tell you differently. And so mm -hmm. that was kind of the inspiration of me looking back at my own life and writing it in these like 10 year blocks, my yeah, first yeah. 10 years, my second 10 years, my 10, 20, 30s and now 40s, basically like a reflective piece. And how the city of Oakland, uh, I have this love-hate relationship with the city. It's like almost everything I love about it, I almost hate about it as well. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. Let me say a couple of things because I want to keep moving. Um, and if one or two people have comments for, the, for each person reading tonight, let's keep it at one or two because we actually are 809 already. Um, and I apologize for that. So one, uh, everyone who's read, including Brother D, Michelle Jones, and Fareed, please go to the chat room after you read because people are giving you a lot of great feedback and please check that out. Um, Brother D, I hear it as a blog, as an essay, you know, because I, as I'm listening to it, I keep hearing the words of, of Bell Hooks, Audre Lorde, uh, Gloria Steinem, V, who used to be known as Eve Ensler, that, that sexism will not end until men make it in. And it's, I hear you as a man who's written about masculinity and manhood a lot, as you know, and do a lot of work, does a lot of work with men and boys as well around the country. You know, you're questioning some things that a lot of us will never question as men, you know, which I think is important. You're asking, where did this all come from? I'm gonna encourage you to keep going deeper, you know, and keep digging deeper and, and consider it an essay because that's what I feel like it is. It's like, it's feel, or it could be part of a memoir, your autobiography, especially since you said, I'm dealing with it by decades, you know. Uh, when I think about a play or a one person show, I think more of the language of, of, of the way Paul, the way August Wilson would write those monologues, those great monologues for his many plays. You know, think about, if you go, just go back and watch Fences and how the Denzel character, and uh, um, the Stephen Henderson character talk about their lives as men, you know, and that's where you would have to get more into, I would say, the, the kind of language we were talking about uh, earlier, you know, where's the metaphors, where's the alliteration, things like that. Now, that's not saying that you couldn't do it with this as a stage piece, because an essay can easily be translated to a stage piece, but I feel like you have something there that, that, that is expo what we would call in college expository writing. It's, it's an expose about your life, you know, and what you've seen, what you've witnessed, and you're questioning some things that you were taught, which is very important because, again, most of us who identify as men or males never question any of it. So I commend you for doing that. I'm just going to say, keep going, keep going, keep going deeper. And if you have not already, yes, bell hooks, yes, read V, you know, because I, I think what has helped me as a, as a male writer, quote unquote, is read, hearing the voices of women also questioning, you know, why, are, why do we have to suffer this kind, through this kind of behavior? You know, and it's very courageous for you, to, you know, particularly coming out of the culture that we come out of. I mean, I'm a hip hop head. It, it was hard for me to actually have to look at stuff that I grew up with and question, like, why is this OK to call women these names? Why is it OK to treat women a certain kind of way? Why is it OK to physically assault women? All the things that we, we were told that it was OK for us to do. That's courageous. But I want you to keep going. Is that cool? And keep digging and digging and digging and see where this takes you. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Um, and please, again, go through the uh, chat rooms, everyone who's reading. It is 8.12. We got more folks with their hands up. I'm going through it. Evangeline, should I come back to you or keep going? No pressure. No pressure. Grace Beniquez, I'm sorry, Grace Beniquez and Gladera Velasquez Sims. Y'all are the next two up. Grace and Gladera, are y'all ready? Yes. Okay. Grace, are you going to keep the Rolling Stone cover up or are you going to let us see you? Um, just it's, up today. To it's up to it's up to you. No ju no pressure. No judgment. Okay. Um, uh, where are you at? I go now. Yeah, you're on now. Oh, okay. Uh, New York. Yeah, New York. That's what's up. What borough? Okay. Uh, originally from the Bronx. The, the BX. Shout out to the BX. <laughs> All right. It's called Egg Yolks. I wanted to write verses that blossomed with love but my muse was in a funk. My muse stayed up late last night and over-caffeinated on the night news where propaganda gangsters spew lethal rhetoric. 
She peered over my shoulder as I scrambled words like egg yolks looking to serve it up, but she is always one step ahead. She pointed to the daily headlines of tragedy. See how hate consumes the sun? See how so many seek solutions through the barrel of a gun? I pretended not to hear and scribbled, the thought of you makes my heart bloom. Mm. She sighed, then stared me down. Do we really need another love poem? My muse hijacked my pen and conspired with rhyme and metaphor, a didactic coup d'etat. There's a noose around the neck of Lady Liberty, placed there by Homeland Security. Take back your tired, your poor. Let the huddled masses drown on your own shores. In fact, take ours too. Mm. If you need to smile, open your ears to the sound of children laughing. My muse shook her head in disgust. So much for the revolutionary poet. We wrestled for control, tripping over stanzas, throwing symbols and dodging analogies. There is hope. There is always hope as surely as there will always be a universe with dreamers and poets seeking to uncover the beauty of truth. Mm. Peace is bound, hogtied, and freedom is running scared because justice eloped with violence. Wow. 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 Woo. Grace Beniglas, wow. I mean, I'm going to say what folks just said in the chat room. Say the title for us again, now, nice and loud. Egg yolks. Egg yolks. I mean, you know, this is what we were talking about a few few moments back, you know, just the power of your words and, and, and you know, metaphors playing with language. Mm-hmm. I assume you, assume you consider that a poem. Is that right? No, yes, yes. Okay. Beautiful. Um, how long have you been writing poetry? Ooh, since I was a kid, it was okay. my... Uh, my outlet. Um, I was very shy as a kid. Mm. Um, didn't talk. I understand. Um, I understand. Yeah. When did you realize your voice matters? Um, when I was in um, freshman year in college. Okay. Um, I actually met Felipe Luciano in high, in high school. Yes. Tell folks who Felipe Luciano is for those who he's don't a, know. He's a He's one of the founders of the Young Lord, yep. and uh, mm-hmm. he's also part of the Last Poets. Yep, that's right. And um, and then I I went to a, a reading. He actually shared his stage with me at that time. Um, oh wow! How did you feel? <laughs> I was scared as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was I was a kid. Yeah, I was you know. Wow! Um, wow! Yeah. I'm- I'm going to say this. I think that you uh, you absolutely must continue to write poetry. I think your poetry is beautiful. I think it's full it's full of life and possibilities. I love the questioning in it. And I want you to keep pushing with the language. Again, mm-hmm. think about metaphors. Think about alliteration, all the literary techniques that we've heard in, in great poems. Um, you know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about Lucille Clifton. I'm thinking about Sonia Sanchez, you know, some of my favorite poets ever. You know, and I just think that um, you've got to keep going. Um, do you have a lot of poems? Do you have a lot of poems? Have you published? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, this is a poem in, in a, a book that I'm going to publish. Will it be your first book? It's my second one. Where's your first um, book at? How do we find it? The first one is on Amazon. It's okay. called Lazarus Bread. And mm. um, I worked on this one for quite a while. And... Um, that poetry book, or you mean that poem? Oh, the the book. Okay. Well, this is this is a second collection. How many poems in the first book, and how many poems will be in the second book? Um, the first one. Well, how many? I think. Uh, I'll get that for you because I don't want to eat up time. Okay. Um, well, you, can you post it in the chat room for put, folks? I'll put like, it in the chat. I somebody put it in the chat. Because <laughs> we, we, we love each other. That's how we roll in here. We support each other. And also, this is folks, my first time here, actually, on this. I'm glad platform. you're here. I'm glad and, you're here. Um, Thank you, Britta from Toronto. I'm glad I've, I I I joined in. You you have to publish that poem. 
You have it's to in the sec it's gonna be in the second one coming out we in November. But what, what I want to say to you and other poets who will be in the session next week, not just put our poems in poetry books, but also put our poems in publications. That's important too, ahead of, if we can, ahead of our books being published, but even if it's afterwards, because, you know, one of the things I learned many years ago from the New York Grace is that, you know, even if you think it's an old poem, when you read a poem, it's new to the people that are hearing it. When they see a poem, it's new to them. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So never consider anything that we write as something that might be old or, you know, that's never the case because someone is new to somebody always. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. We need you. We need you. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, and folks, I'm willing to go past nine if folks want to stick around after nine. I mean, I'm here. I mean, Chris, can we, Chris, are you okay? And today, can you just let me know if we need to go about 30 minutes longer? Because I just want to get to anyone, everyone. Can are I we... just ask something real quick, Grace? Yes. Thank I, you. I just, I just sent you something in, a, in, in the chat just to you, but I just wanted to, and, and I want to say this real quick because I know I go down rabbit holes. Um, mm -hmm. We need to cite each other and black women, we need to cite each other. And I have a real issue with, with that aspect in scholarship, but like Grace, I need to cite you. And so what you said was insanely powerful to me, especially. Yeah. Oh no. We powerful. Like I could use okay. that right now. And so I want to cite you and I want to be, whether you're published or not, and there is a way to cite people that are unpublished. And I say this to sisters, to each other, because brothers, y'all already do it to eat for each other. But sisters, what we tend to do is we will take ideas from each other. And if it's not published, we just, we just use it. So I'm saying like, I'm, this is my challenge to us to put each other on the map. When you hear something that a powerful woman of color has to say, use it in your writing and say her name. Mm. And, and there's a way to do that. And so I have decided that even in conversation, when I am in conversation with other powerful women that have stuff to say, I put it in my writing and I will cite it in conversation and put their name out there. So that when you begin to show up in spaces, like people will be like, I don't know where I heard her before, but somebody, like we need to do that for each other. And so in this, I'm saying, Grace, I sent you a, a little message saying, I want to cite something that you said, reach out to me so that I know how to do it, how to put it in even some stuff that I'm working on now. And I say this to sisters out there, just let's figure out how to not act like stuff comes from the osmosis. When we, when you hear it, say her name. Yeah, I agree. That's all I have to say. I agree. Wow, thank you. Um, Grace, I sent you my email in the chat as well. Please, you know, hit me up so we can talk too, because um, I agree, your work needs to be out there. It's really powerful. All thank of you, you very much. All of you, all of you who read tonight, powerful work. Um, uh, Gladera and Van Evangeline, are you two, you two next? Do you still want to go? Both of you, Evangeline Lawson and Gladera Velasquez Sims, are you still out there? Either of you? Anybody? Going once? No one wants to go now. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh the bit of the last Sorry. she can't mute. Is, she, is that I you? I couldn't unmute. I'm here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I can go too. I didn't unmute my. <laughs> is that Evangeline? Are you? Yeah. Okay, so you both are unmuted. Yeah. You want to go first or Evangeline? It doesn't matter. I can. Okay. Hey, Michelle Sims. Evangeline, out there. I'll go. Hey, Angel Miles, I see you. Hey, Angel Miles. Ella Chapman, hey. Did you want me to go? I have yes, you yes. You, ready? Go. you ready? And, and Chris, yes. Go. I can go with you, whichever is fine. Look, Dara, you can go first. Okay, All right. I'm ready. <laughs> can, we send her, can we send to her screen? And would you, where are you based out of? And what are you going to, what genre of writing, if any? Yes, I'm based out of Ithaca, um, and uh, this is yes, <laughs> and this is a, a poem. Um, it's untitled. Okay, no problem. Ready? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Can we center her, uh, Chris Lopez? Is it possible to center Gladera? Un momento, Gladera. Okay. Gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Nena. You caught my eye from the moment I walked into the room and you were there. Your shiny armor blinded me. A love at first sight. I hesitated to approach. 
intimidated by the fullness of your body, the rigidness of your curves. Could we be a match? I wondered. I don't want to get hurt, but I want to learn how to treat you right. Hmm. I've read about your type. I want to be careful of getting in a relationship with you that ends up more than I can bite. If I don't give you a chance, I will never know. Hmm. I will approach you caution, gear myself up. Nana, I know many avoid you. Fear the unknown trail they may find when with you. Exuberantly so, I climb on to you, immediately feeling your compatibility. Your height to mine, my body hovered over yours, hmm. pushing my hips back. You cradle my love zone. And together we begin to move, the feeling of you between my legs bumping up and down i'm holding on for dear life getting it up there was hard sometimes having to switch gears so to not lose our momentum but once we got there coming down blew me away reaching that spot i want to ride away with you lose myself of course with compass always in view wow Wow. Yes. And that, that poem is actually about my mountain bike. <laughs> I was getting, it was getting hot in here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. That actually makes it even more genius. Yeah. That was yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> genius. Wow. Oh my you god. Had a, I'm like leaning into the computer, y'all. <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> I'm like, where is this going? What's going on? Not, my mind is in the gutter. <laughs> me too. Me, well, you know. It's it's a pandemic too, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Gladera, that was brilliant. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's what you do with writing. Wow. A mountain bike? Wow. That's, skill, that's skillful. I need to hear it again now. I'm so, <laughs> <laughs> and, and everyone, brother G, Farid, Michelle, um, um, Clayton, or the Clayton didn't read. Um, uh, Grace, can you please post your poem if you're comfortable in the in the chat room, please? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I have to ask a couple quick questions. How long have you been writing poetry? Um, brilliant! Wow. I I think ooh, for for some time I've always found writing as like a way to express myself because. Wait, Kildare, um, someone, just, wait, Kildare, someone just posted, you got us all hot and bothered about a bicycle. My <laughs> fault, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what, I just, I just got into mountain biking a year ago, and the first thing after I rode the bike was I wanted to write about it. Mm. Wow, wow. That's awesome. Wow. Uh, um, someone else said that that poem will sell a whole lot of bicycles. <laughs> I mean, but that, that's how you manipulate language. Uh, we we had no idea where you. Wow. At now, all, now that you say what it's like about, that. say that again. Michelle. Say it again, Michelle. The way she read it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 But, but dude, have you read poetry in public before? Yeah, so I um, actually my um, my partner uh, hosted like these cipher nights, and I was like, no, I've never Wait, read anything in ben person. Ortiz? Is Ben Ortiz? Yes. yes. <laughs> what up, Ben? <laughs> yeah, so he he hosted um, cipher nights, and I was like, I I kind of mentioned to him, like, yo, I have all these things that I write, and I was like, I've, I've never read it in person. And so he kind of like, you know, like motivated me, hyped me up. And I started doing that. And it was, it was awesome. It was I love awesome. it. I love yeah. it. Someone suggested, thank you. Thank you so much. Someone just suggested that we set up a Facebook group for this writers group. Are yes. you with that? Yes. Yes. We have all yes. your emails. Um, so Daya, let's mm -hmm. uh, make a note that we're going to set up a Facebook page. Because I also realized we need to have that Facebook page just to announce these, these, these uh, sessions. But we'll do that. Um, Hey, no there, all I can say is, please never stop writing poetry. Have you been published anywhere? 
Gladera, have you been published anywhere? Can you hear me, Gladera? Did we lose yeah. him? Oh, sorry, I couldn't mute. Um, no, I have not been published. You have, you have to, you have to. I um I'm gonna um I will make sure especially for the poets next week I'm gonna list some places that for you all to start sending your work to we'll we'll bring a list of stuff that we'll put in the chat room next week okay is that cool y'all nice I mean because y'all got to get published I mean straight up everything that I'm hearing tonight I'm like yeah let's get the work out there because also when you start to publish that's how you grow as a writer too when you start getting that feedback not just from a writing workshop like this but from people reading your work that's cool, cool but that wow Evangeline you ready. Uh oh, we can't hear you. Okay. Am I okay now? It's, we're having oh. a hard time. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yes. Can yeah. yeah. everyone hear her? Yes. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then you hear me? It's yes, choppy. No. It's choppy. Uh, mm. The reception is uh, a little choppy. Am I the only one that's hearing choppiness? No, I hear it too. I hear it too. Yes. Okay. Samson, just raise. Oh yeah. Your hand. Everybody just else is breaking. Okay. Um, is there a way you can move to another uh, room or something, and we come back to you? I won't. You won't. You'll still be able to read because it's just very choppy. I want people to be able to hear you. Maybe try uh, to take sure. off the video. Try it without the video. You said, Chris. Yeah. Sometimes it improves the audio. Yeah. Try it without the video. Okay. Is it better without video? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Very clearly now. You're not okay. So clear. leave it in that mode. Yep. Just for the reading. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, Evangeline from California. And the title of this is Room. And it's, I guess, an autobiographical essay in that style. Okay. Okay. What are you mixed with? They asked when I walked into the room. As if being black wasn't enough. My eyes darted across the inquisitive faces to avoid eye contact. Instead, focusing on mouths and shoes. I struggled to answer for a few reasons. One, I hadn't been raised to look at diversity and blackness. Either you were or you weren't. And second, why couldn't I just be me? In my family, it wasn't rare to have long hair. My sister and cousins share that same genetics with some whose hair was even longer than mine. And the freckles that swept across my nose, I had inherited from my auntie Anne and my great grandmother. But I guess having that combination with brown skin and tight eyes was odd to them. It just didn't fit and therefore I didn't. There wasn't any room in their finite world for a girl who looked like me, and I didn't understand. It was not until my friend loudly proclaimed in front of everyone in our lunch circle that I was different because I had a white girl nose that I started to examine myself. My full lips with a sharp cupid's bow set below that nose with slightly darker pigmented dots across the bridge, which started to terrorize to slits with smile big, lost beneath two bushy caterpillar-like eyebrows that almost met middle, almost, and the hair, the brown coils that expanded with the humidity and became unmanageable, typically tightly wound into a bun for control in order to avoid embarrassment. All of those features, all of that variation, there just wasn't any room in anyone's mind for that kind of difference. At that age, I didn't place an emphasis on physical beauty. I mean, sure, I cared about what I looked like, but I never saw myself as pretty or cute like the other girls at school with their relaxed hairstyles mirroring those I often saw in music videos or in magazines. I was soft-spoken and awkward, not confident, cool or commanding. So I decided that beauty wouldn't be my thing, but brains would. That was something that could not be seen to be judged to become a degree of separation between me and others at first glance. Besides, I had a cute sister with an outgoing personality whose soft curly hair and perfect tooth smile rivaled those that were passing judgment. Two pretty girls that were black in one family, there wasn't room enough for that anyway. Wow, wow. 
Mm. Wow. How many words is that? Wow. Wow. I think a little over five. A little over five. Wow. That's uh have a, a bunch of things on the Wow, you're you're the, the all of a sudden did you did we bring her video back or something? Because it got choppy again. Um I agree with what Sophia Nelson just said. You painted a picture with that. It sounds like a film. Uh folks are saying snap, snap, snap. Um yep. wow. On it, the brutal honesty of it, I love um, it, it. It that's your voice. That's that I love the I love that essay voice of yours um, because again, you know when we write personal essays like that, it's not just about ourselves because other people can see themselves in the stories that we're telling as we're kind of reflecting on some part of our lives. And I thank you for that. Um, someone said simply beautiful, pure truth. Um, anyone else want to add to it? But I, I just I think. I hope that you write a series of autobiographical essays that just kind of explore your journey because that's that's that was beautiful, for lack of a better word. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else want to weigh in? And we can put our video back on, Chris. Anyone? I'm, yeah. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying yeah. so hard not to like keep talking, but. Who was that? Is that Carla, St. Louis? No, this is Kimberly. Evangeline, can oh, I? Oh, Jenkins. Say, I'm sorry. Can I just say for somebody who grew up hearing like my peers that were like light skinned, I grew up in Detroit. And so it was the Jits versus the Preppies. And the Preppies were the upper middle class light skinned girls who grew up on the west side with Cast Tech and, you know, and, and the Jitterbugs were. Light skin, brown skin, doesn't matter. Working class black kids grew up on the east side. Parents generally, um, my grandfather like came up and raised his family on working, working, on, working at Chrysler. But all his kids in college, but working class black mentality. And so I grew up with being in that in between and in, in between being a jitterbug from the east side and like, but with the intellectual according to them, intellectual mentality of like the Elites and the preppies on the West Side. And so hearing you talk, it was like the same thing. Like I grew up hearing my peers, not even my family, but my peers saying, you know, you're pretty for a brown skin girl, right? And so, mm -hmm. I, and so my, my complexion is like between yours and my mom's, it's like in between. So, but, but that was always an issue. It was always like, you're pretty for a brown skin girl because you got the hair. Not, not, not straight hair like my friends or not like, I didn't have like loose oils, but my hair is like yours, right? But it wasn't, it still wasn't, it wasn't good hair. It was like in between hair. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So your poetry, like what you're saying speaks right. to a whole generation. Mm -hmm. It hasn't changed. Like there's no. a whole, as a as an elementary school teacher, I remember having these conversations with little brown skin girls in my classroom in third grade. Like the whole she light skin, she dark skin, all of that. It's like we hit it and it hasn't changed. And so when I hear your poetry, I'm like, that needs to. You need to keep writing. You. That, like, I need access to that type of thing. Like, people like me need access to that type of thing as we need for little brown skin girls in elementary I can read your poetry as is in a second grade class in my little brown skin second grade girls in the hood would know exactly. Mm. Mm. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. You know, whole pretty for brown skin girl, because you got me here. Oh, God. You sent me back. I just wanted to say you sent me back. I promise I'm not going to say anything else. Oh, folks, it's 837, and um, we only are halfway through the list, so I just want to be mindful. I'm willing to go past 9 o'clock if y'all willing to hold on past 9 o'clock. Y'all good out there? I'm good. Okay. Samson, I know, Samson, are you still there? Keep going. Yeah, Samson, I'm still there. You want to come everyone. Hey, my brother. He's a, Samson's a brilliant filmmaker. I just need to shout him out. How y'all doing? Um, post-traumatic it's like the whole hood has it mm. seeing too many homies and fam up in the casket 
try to count how many I knew that gotten blasted, reached a hundred, then stopped counting, couldn't stand it. Mm. No therapy, we self-medicate, sex sweet and Xanax. It's hard to be sober these days, couldn't imagine. Popo running rampant, popping unarmed black men, no penalty, they hop scot free, swearing they panic. Man, the hood damaged. Ribs touching, we famished. But stunting Snapchat in the gram like we lavish. Posting pics with heat cash, bragging, bragging about trapping. Funeral time, GoFundMe page. Duke, what happened? Priorities vanished before pants started sagging. 80s crack era left many tribes of bastards. I was one that poisoned the hood when I had it. So I apologize. Didn't realize the havoc. Wow. 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 I mean, visual as heck, probably because you are a filmmaker as well, you know, and I actually hope that you set that to a film because that was, that was, I mean, like someone said in the chat room as you were reading, the first line alone, bro, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, you know, buckshots, it's like boom, you know, and I always say that, that a great piece of poetry should be like, or great music, because poetry is music to me, should be like that piano out the window. And that's what that poem is, because it's just like, here is what it is, you know what I mean? And I love it. What inspired you to write it? Um, my latest documentary about gun violence in the Black community, where I use myself to be uh, like a self-commentary, mm. to mm. use as a micro into the macro. Um, and that's a true fact. I, was remember, I remember when I was in prison, I was counting. I tried to count everybody I knew that got shot and killed. Wow. It was kind of boring that day. And I said, let wow. me, and I, I stopped counting at 100. Mm, mm. I, I could have kept going. And that's not normal. Wow. It is not normal. You know, and so when we hear people say, let's return back to normal with this pandemic, I mean, what is normal depending on who you are, where you come from, right? Right. Yeah. Do you, you, do, do you read a lot of poetry? Um, not, not so much. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. but I listen to a lot of rap <laughs> which is poetry <laughs> right. like, like the DOC right. said rhythmic right. American poetry that's what rap is rhythmic right. American poetry right. I um, I loved it I would even say man um, keep writing it you know because um, you know again like I said earlier when I think about monologues because that also could easily be a monologue that's the kind of piece that could be a monologue for a play you know what I mean it's just like you think about we ex we're expressing ourselves we're talking about what we've experienced you know, and, and clearly it came from the things that you witnessed um, if I could just segue for a second someone asked me privately um, I hope they're still in the room uh, that this space feels like it's for only experienced writers I just need to stress a lot of people are reading work for the first time tonight you know and so there's a range of experiences. What I said up front, I'll say every week at the beginning, in the middle, the end, this space is for everyone. You know, we treat everyone equally. We don't care if you've been published. We don't care if you have a screenplay that's been, that's been made into a film. If you have a play on stage, if you're, you've got a PhD, if you've got a GED, if you've got no degree, no diploma, there's no judgment. Can we agree y'all? No judgment, right? No judgment. Um, um, but the question that was asked, will there be instructions for how to write with more metaphors. Yes, definitely, particularly next week when we do the poetry workshop. And I really actually encourage you all, even if you're not a poet, because uh, even if you're writing essays, even if you're writing screenplays, I mean, when I think about, uh, and you appreciate this, Samson, when you go back to Denzel Washington's performance and, and Viola Davis's performance, which she won the Oscar for in Fences, but particularly listen to the metaphors, the language that is used, People forget that before August Wilson wrote plays, he actually wrote poetry that's very similar to the kind of poem that Samson just read, you know? And so, yes, no, no, this is not the wrong platform if you're a beginning writer, uh, no experience. This is a platform for everyone. Uh, who asked, the person who asked that question, if you're still here, just ask. If you have a question, just jump in and say, Kev, how do we write, how do I, how do I make, how do I do metaphors? How do I do alliteration? What does that mean? How do I write a haiku? You know, just ask the question. Um, this is a safe space, no judgment. There's no, you know, there's no shame in asking because all of us are teaching each other. That's why this is intentionally uh, interactive. Is, is that cool, y'all? Because I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable here like this is not a space for them, all right? You know, don't get caught up in some people are published, some people are not. That's, this is not that kind of space. We're not getting down like that here, 
We just want people to feel comfortable sharing their work. And hopefully from these seven weeks that we all grow in some form or fashion. I know I am just listening to you all. Samson, thank you. And I, I do think you should make that into a use, either you or someone else do the voiceover for it. And that should be a film as well, because it's powerful with the images. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And to, to the person asking the question, and I would say the Samson and other folks are writing poems, metaphors, metaphors, metaphors. Like, what can I say that even pushes the language even more as I'm writing this poem? All right, y'all? Um, let me see. Uh, we are at our eighth person. So I see up Kimberly Jenkins and Lugera Cooper and Andrea Price. So I'm getting to y'all hands. So Lugera Cooper, Kimberly Jenkins, and Andrea Price. Are y'all ready? Y'all still want to perform? I'm read. I'm sorry. Y'all yes. good out there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Woo. We're getting through it. Who's going first? And Samson, post the poem in the chat room so folks can see. And folks, please share your social media handle if you're comfortable with it uh, and social media as well for folks. Because people are asking, how can we stay in touch with each other? But we'll definitely have the Facebook group too. We'll have it up by the end of the week. Who's going? I'm sorry. Who's going? Who's going first? Uh, I just went, let's do Lugera Cooper. Lugera, am I saying your name right? Is it Lugera or Lugera? Lugera. Lugera, I remember that. Lugera Cooper, then Kimberly Jenkins, then is it Andrea yeah. or Andrea Price? Andrea, I'm from and the deep south, so it's Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> yeah. yes. What part of the south are you from? I'm from Arkansas. Arkansas, oh, wow. what, what city? Monticello, Arkansas. I have but I live in Virginia right now, but are, I'm from Arkansas. Are you in the, the DMV, all right. <laughs> okay. Cool, so, um, Lujaira Cooper, then Kimberly Jenkins, then Andrea, Andre, Aunt Andrea Price. Yes. My bad. Andrea, <laughs> Andrea Price. Yes, ma'am. All right. What are, we, uh, what are we doing? It's called The Day Of. It's reported by Lacey Ramos for Charisma News. Um, can we center Ms. Cooper, Brother Chris Lopez? Can we center her? One second. So everyone can see you. Oh, please. I don't want to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> We can see. I want, to, I want to be heard, but I don't want to be seen. Yeah, you, you have a great voice. Thank you kindly. Anyway, it's called The Day Of. It's reported okay. by Le Lacey Ramos for Charisma News. Hmm. Just before dawn, during the preparations for the 25th anniversary of the landing on Charisma, the unexpected happened. A prison ship found its way into Charisma space, hmm. offloaded with 500 purple-suited, emaciated men and women. Captain John Longfellow, a small, rotund man, had them stand aside as he claimed the planet for the Federation of United Countries. Shackled, they looked around with nervous apprehension. Quadrant leader Defiance Moore asked who they were and what this so-called Federation wanted. Upon being informed Charisma would be a prison colony, she said, hell no, it won't. Wow. She stalked off to call the planet's military leader, her great-grandmother, Rihanna Moore. Commander Moore and her lo lawyer wife, Lauren McCutcheon, arrived at the landing site in their black and teal sky car. Nearly six feet tall, Moore towered over Longfellow. His bullying mm -hmm. tactics did not work on her. Unilaterally, she told the former prisoners they were welcome here. She ascertained the allegations against them according to Longfellow were for acts of terrorism, writing pamphlets denouncing the regime of Hawkins, and taking over government buildings. Also, Defiance and Longfellow said this was to be Botany Bay-like. To that, she said never, and called for a full meeting of the Wisdom mm -hmm. Council. The seven-member council convened in the historic Rose Auditorium, adorned with stained glass portraits of Charisma's Queen Adriana and pictures of Earth's heroes, Frederick Douglass, Nelson Mandela, Eli Weasel, and heroines of Fraternal Truth, Ella Baker, Fannie Lou Hamer, and Harriet Tubman. Huh. Residents and newcomers sat waiting for council's decision. The council heard Moore's impassioned plea to allow them to remain. One reason was residents, this was 25 years is too long to remain isolated. We need new blood. She also mm -hmm. stated, now that Hawkins knows we're alive, he'll rush here and be destroyed. Earth historian Roscoe Pettiford explained the constant footage of the Frederick Douglass destroyed in space. He said it was a way to keep people in line and show the people no one could escape. The speech is over. Moore exited the room and the council 
as the council deliberated, hearing they unanimously, unanimously voted to allow the newcomers to remain, Moore gathered those to transport to Amethyst City, her home base. This was a day of liberation. Wow. Wow. When did you write that piece and what genre would you consider that piece? It's science fiction. Mm. I wrote it last week for a prompt for my writing play shop because I don't do workshops. Uh, and um, mm. it's part of a longer story, but it's a news clipping to the actual events of what happens. Wow. Wow. You, when you say play shop, you're talking about a different play shop, not this play shop. No, this is how you say workshop. I say play shop. <laughs> so this is our play shop? I got you. I'm no, with it. No, but I don't use that word, workshop. Workshop implies work. Okay. <laughs> I want people to play with words. I love that. Jared, thank you. Wow. So you literally just wrote that piece. I wrote that piece uh, yeah, last week for, yeah, for, my, for a prompt I gave somebody else. Oh, wow. How many, do you know how many words that is or how many pages that is? I, it's one and a half pages, so I'm not sure, probably about 250, because it is supposed to be a news clipping, so it's going within the story that's there, and there's, because when Moore discusses the Federation of the United Countries, she never calls it that, she just calls it fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's why reading it is no fun, because you have to see it, you know? Wow. I love the way you play with, I mean, what I've loved about the whole night, including your piece, LaJara, is just y'all are in so many different structures, so many different genres or cross genres. And this is, wow, wow. Who, who, did, who did you read coming up that inspired you to move towards science fiction? I've read so many people and I read a lot of, well, actually, re, okay, first of all, this is part of my charisma story, hmm. which actually started seven years ago where people escape earth because of a regime coming up. So this is very kind of prophetic. I'd like to escape earth. <laughs> Thank you. Where's their charisma? But I read a, I read Octavia Butler. Right now, my favorite reading is J.D. Robb because she has this in-depth series. Yes. And I'm trying to do the same thing. I wrote Theft of, Hon Theft of, Theft of Trust. I just submitted Theft of Honor to a publisher. So I'm, and then I'm doing the charisma piece and then I write blogs for uh, the Brooklyn Society of Ethical Culture. So I'm just all over the place. I love it. I love it. I love it. I mean, I love the way your mind moves with this, with that piece you just shared. Is that going to be a part of a larger piece? Or? Yeah, it's part of a, I, it's part of a charisma book. I haven't figured out what we're calling that book yet. But it's a very strange planet. It sort of cloaks itself. It has iron storms and a red snow. I mean, it's a very weird planet. I love it though. It's very visual. Talking about being something being visual. That's my planet is very visual. Well, you know what I love about the piece, Ligeria. Like I mean, you know, writers have to have an imagination. You know, I don't care what genre you write in, you have to have an imagination. And you took us some places that I really appreciate. And you also made it relevant, not just to history, but also to our present times. And it also, to me, is foreshadowing, you know? Because um, at the end of the day, as I was listening to your piece, I kept hearing the word freedom. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean for us, you know? I think powerful, and I, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. I can't <laughs> wait to see this series. Just thank you. Thank you for sharing it. You're welcome. And, I do see you. Can y'all see her too? See, see, see the, oh, the and I that's love your, I love the art behind you as well. Yeah. That's to hide my dirty. That's to hide my junkie room. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to see what the floor looks like underneath me. That's why the. Uh, -uh I understand. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, thank you. Kimberly Jenkins, KJ, you're next. Okay, I'm coming up. I, can I just real shout out to all the Afrofuturism people out there? Like, yes. I'm so <laughs> yes. Can y'all please publish so I can have more to read? <laughs> I'm loving it. The future is um, beautiful. Yes. Just coming it. Okay, so this is a work in progress. How we forgive my preface. Work in progress. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just three paragraphs. Um, oh. Prologue. Huh. She flipped her dreadlocks, which I found ironic as her Afrocentrism was only a facade. 
perhaps a representation of a silenced narrative, unlived, unfortunate. What she didn't understand was that she didn't need to send me up the river. Her words and toxic environment of her own oppression was river enough. She thought, hoped, what white women would do to me had not been done, but had been reoccurring and survived down through three generations of black women in the US education system since reconstruction. It has only been repeated daily in the Jim Crow Boston lockdown style in which we have been conditioned and now educate our own children. She, in her own hijacked self-awareness, believed I had somehow escaped such experiences of being regulated and reminded of my niggerness. She, feeling some kind of way about it, remanded the sharing of my own scholarship and exchange of scholarship with others, those who expressed interest and had skin in the game to share as well, to overstepping my blackness and dismiss my competence and articulation as one of the whiteness. All that added up to her, um, in fact, was one fact as far as she was concerned. I indeed, I needed to learn my place in the status quo, conditions under which we teach our own. Shut up. Mm. Hold on, my space. Thank you, John. Okay. All right. Shut up, keep a head down, don't be too headstrong. Dress and wear liberation garb, but don't be about it. Freedom, however, is not in the apparel. Agency does not develop in the hearts and minds of young black people forced to walk down the halls along heel toe on a red line drawn down hallway floors of school with bubbles and hugs, their arms wrapped around themselves as a physical form of self restraint and mouths full of air to keep them from speaking as they are moved from one section of a place to another. Wearing dreadlocks as she oversees their compliance suggests only hypocrisy. I suppose she heard me speak the language of her apparel as she spoke the language of mine. I never needed to wear Mother Africa on my sleeve. I am fully aware of who I am and the historical context of my identity, whether I, my swag incorporates pinstripes and red bottoms or kente and cowrie shells. I've rocked both. My students recognize me same woke lover of their intellectual souls, either or. Wow. You said it's a it's a prologue. That was a prologue to um, the piece that I'm working on is called Blackness as a Language of Resistance, an ontological mm. assembly of voice. And um, it's a I, I don't know what it is yet, but the prologue is a breakdown of all the very of my experiences of the various points that I want to discuss in the piece. And I've, I've broken it down to um, a language of the curriculum and shaping of teacher imaginations mm. uh, and resistance and um, then uh, sort of a, a assemblage of voices of color in how education, you know, is a form of um, apologetics it, mm -hmm. or black education has become a form of apologetics, but not just black education, but education of those African-Americans, black folk of the diaspora, um, First Nations, you know, it's, it's almost as education as a consistent piece of colonialism. And so, but I wanted to, I, I was, I'm, I'm tired of talking about what white folks do. And I kind of wanted to talk about what black folks do and what black folks do to, to perpetuate that, so, that same my, colonialism mind, that, that perpetuation of, hege, of hegemony that they don't even realize they're perpetuating by keeping other people in line. Mm. And it's a fear of the apple cart. And so that was just sort of a prologue of an experience that I had of a woman that I really trusted and thought was gonna help shape my space in K-12, but instead she ended up kind of turning on me, but not just me, just, it, I, I, it, I wasn't by myself in that. And there are many experiences that I have of that. And so I kind of wanted to shape this personality of 
of like an, an unsuspect, like a, an unsuspected or self unsuspecting overseer. So mm -hmm. to you know, uh, and so that I, was it. No, I, I thought it was powerful. I want to echo what Farid said in the chat room, you know, your peace sharply frames institutional rejection. Um, yeah. And you know, what I've thought about in my own life, and I'm sure other folks out there who, who are, or who are scholars, who are, educators in some way, even folks who have children in the educational system, whatever level it is, you know, is this a space of freedom or is this a space of further oppression? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think you frame it. I, I, you left me wanting to read more. I'm like, can we have more and more? Can we have the whole piece? It's, in, it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. I'm working on it. Okay. It, it sounds I'm, like, Legere, I'm sorry. Legere, Legere, I'm sorry. Like, that's all right. It sounds like you're saying that it's for a paper. But what it also sounds like is the prologue to a book. I agree. It got that's it. What I, that's what I thought of when, when you started. It gave me that whole, I thought of The Handmaid's Tale. And I thought of all this stuff where there's all this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's back, to, back to what you were saying, that Afrofuturism. And now this shows how we do it ourselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, wow. and, and I think you have to go for it because a lot of times we'll, we'll say, well, it's just this, but I'm like, well, why can't it be a whole book? You know, I just think that, and as I've heard you speak over these two weeks, uh, Kimberly, it's like, you know, you're clearly one of our brightest minds out of academia, period. I mean, I don't know you other than the last two okay. weeks, but I'm listening. I'm serious. You know, I mean, there's a lot of fakers out there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know oh, what I'm yeah. And so we need to read. It's funny. We need to, <laughs> the folks who truly are progressive, no matter what their identities, we need to hear those voices. Because as I've said to some of the writers privately here, a lot of times those of us who really have something to say, we squash our voices. Then we got other folks speaking for us or speaking for our situations. And they're not even qualified to do it. You know, uh, they, you know I, they haven't lived with Samson's lived. They haven't done the work you've done on the academic level, Kimberly. We need to hear your voices. Y'all feel what I'm saying? That's important. So please keep writing that. And I think it is a book. I agree with Lajara. Um, I it's, that. it's nine o'clock and we got five more to go. I want to call up. We got Miss Price next and then Marissa Benson, Kay Hernandez and Andrew Skerritt. If y'all all still here, can y'all still hold on? I'm good. I'm losing my voice, but I'm good. Okay. So uh, Miss Price, then Marissa Benson, then Kay Hernandez and Andrew Skerritt. All right. All right. Thank you, Kevin, for this workshop. So my poem is Ooh. short and sweet. <laughs> All right. So here it is. You sent me into exile, into a land I've never known. I kneeled in prayer, prayer and worship, trying to understand what's going on. You said you had plans for me and they will prosper too. You give me hope in the future that you want me to use. I feel alone and helpless in this land I've never known. I pray and seek to find you, my love for you I've shown. Help me to make meaning of a world that is so cold. Release me from captivity and make me a new home. Mm. Oh. That sums up 2020. <laughs> exactly. That's what, I wrote it from this space. <laughs> so. When did you write? When did you write the piece? Wow. Um, about a two week, two or three weeks ago. Okay. So okay. I literally wrote like ten poems that day. <laughs> Just. I had to get you wrote all ten poems in one day. <laughs> I had to get wow. all of it out that day, and this is one of them. What? So you are a poet? I I just write. I don't okay. have any kind of. I write a lot of prayers. I write poems. I write po prose. All kind of different things. But that day, I wrote a lot of poetry. What poets do you love? Well, I, so I, as I said before, I'm from Arkansas. So I fell in love with Maya in fourth grade. I saw another black woman. <laughs> from Arkansas in rural Arkansas, a country girl that actually wrote a book. So uh -huh. she was the first poet and writer I fell in love with and I, that love hasn't left. I want to um, encourage and my Aunt Sophie. She's, Your Aunt Sophie? Yeah, <laughs> she was the poet at the church that I, I really fell in love with her writings as a young girl too. And she's so always- So she would write poems and perform them at the church, the local Yeah. Group. Wow, yeah. wow, yeah. beautiful. Keep writing those poems, keep digging for metaphors and alliteration, and mm -hmm. keep telling your truth. We need mm -hmm. you. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you call yourself a writer? I do. Okay. Do you mm -hmm. call yourself a poet specifically, ever? 
I'll just say writer. I just, okay. I just write all kind of things, but yeah. So I've, I've been writing a lot of poems um, since I've been here with COVID at home, you know. Okay. Had time to write. Now I tore my Achilles playing basketball. So I was kind of there too. You sent me into this place where I'm like a 40 year basketball. old basketball player tearing my Achilles. So I'm recovering from an injury in the middle of all of this. Wait, you said you're a how old basketball player? 40 year old. <laughs> I was <laughs> playing at the Y. So. No judgment. <laughs> So you grew up playing basketball. Yes, mm-hmm. and so I was playing right before COVID hit. So I've been here with COVID and uh, injury. So yeah, it's been crazy this summer. But it's allowed you to become prolific. Yes, that's a blessing. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, keep 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 writing. And remember, do you remember? Did you know the name of the poet from Arkansas I mentioned earlier, Henry Dumas? Did yes, you know? from Little Rock. I've read some of his stuff. So his Brilliant tragic Rock. his story is tragic. So yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm all up in it. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank, thank you. you. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else want to respond to, to Ms. Price real quick? Well, I have to say it's cool. <laughs> I love you. that. That's a Thank cool, you. that's a good word, cool. Thank you. Marissa Benson, are you there? Kay Hernandez, Andrew Skerritt, are y'all there? Marissa, Kay Hernandez, Andrew Skerritt, y'all good out there? I appreciate y'all holding on. I think we may have lost some folks. Hi, I think I can unmute now. Hey, Hi, everyone. everyone. Thank you so much for all of this event and your words. And thank you for the structure of this, too, the organic structure. Thank you. I'm going to read tonight a bit of my piece called Complacency. It was written in honor of Yusuf Kumiyaka. Oh, wow. A Dax poet, a Pulitzer Prize-winning writer, and a poet who I had the good fortune to honor twice as he lives in Trenton, New Jersey. I live in Ewing right outside of Trenton. And it's my piece called Complacency. Thank you. Complacency. My white face breathes complacency hidden in the blue hue privilege of my passport that labels me American. Hidden in a blue hue privilege of my passport that labels me American. August 6, 2018, Washington, D.C. August 6, 2018, Washington, D.C. American sanctions go into effect in Tehran, Iran. This measure will affect millions, deepening inequality, uplifting hardliners. More freedoms are oppressed as things become expensive. Inside the sanctions I see a man's tear the bandages needed for his sister's wound are no longer affordable he wonders how much longer she will live he wonders how much longer she will live complacency my white face breathes complacency hidden in the blue hue privilege of my passport that labels me American April 21st 2004 Basra Iraq April 21st, 2004, Basra, Iraq. American radioactive bomb blast rubble remains, poison soil, poison food. Cancer expands as the food is digested in the body. The stomach and head start to ache. Sleeping becomes a challenge. The shake the quakes, the blast action made our gas prices more affordable. Oh. The price of our t- criminal wow. complacency. My white face breathes complacency hidden in the blue view privilege of my passport that labels me American. September 22nd, 2018, Trenton, New Jersey. September 22nd, 2018, Trent, New Jersey, Trent House. Slavery still exists in America. We stand mm-hmm. upon land steeped in history, steeped in slavery. Feel the wind. Imagine their spirits. Close your eyes. Open them within today's prison system. Slavery transition. Corporations control human freedom now. This prison system is known as convict leasing as convicts are leased to corporations to lift profits up. Mm -hmm. State governments are following their lead. What will it take 
for humans to be rehabilitated and freed? What will it take for humans to be rehabilitated and freed? Complacency, my white face breathes complacency, hidden in the blue hue privilege of my passport that labels me American. 165 countries, 165 countries. My passport grants me visa-free access, at least prior to COVID, to 165 <laughs> countries where, due to my skin color, if I decide to reside, I become an ex expat, not an immigrant. If I decide to reside, I become an expat, mm. not an immigrant. Safety is granted as a privilege one can afford when it should be a human right. Safety is granted as a privilege one can afford when it should be a human right. Mm. No passport, no country, no passport, no country. Safety does not exist for an eight-year-old child trapped at the border, viewed as a criminal. This child stays awake tonight praise she will not get raped tonight can you find her a passport and bring her to safety can you find her a passport and bring her to safety mm. complacency my white face breathes complacency hidden in the blue hue privilege of my passport that labels me american hidden in the blue hue privilege of my passport that labels me American. Thank you so much for the space. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, wow. You no, know, I tell you, um, Arissa uh, and Brother D earlier, Arissa with race, skin privilege, Brother D with gender privilege around masculinity. Thank you both for challenging privilege, seriously, because uh, that's, uh, wow. We need what we call in the active circle protest poetry, you know, particularly in these times that are going to have the courage to challenge all the systems of oppression, all the isms, all the phobias, all the things that, that oppress people, that discriminate against people, that hate people, uh, that hate on people. And just thank you. Uh, as someone said, Marissa, I love the uh, call and response of it, uh, which is one of our traditions as, as poets. Um, I love the historical references and I love the current events. And I mean, you know, when someone said the blue, the blue hue of my passport that makes me American, just yeah. the constant repeating of that. Yeah. yeah. Has that poem been published? Can you hear me? Has that poem been published? Marissa, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, it's in the press. Is it in a is it in a book form? Is it in your Oh gosh, I'm having a hard time hearing. Yes. I think I'm on. No, you're, you're, okay, you're, maybe I froze. If you keep the video I'm, in, yeah. I'm in the process of recording it to put it in music form. Oh, one more. Love it, love it, love it, love it. What inspired you to write it? Yeah. It's okay. What, what inspired you to write it? I think we're having some Zoom issues, y'all. I apologize, Marissa, if you can hear me. We're having some Zoom issues. Marissa, if you can hear us, just look at the comments. Am I on it? Okay. Marissa, if you can hear me, please put your- Am I on now? Uh-oh. Hello? Oh, okay. Um, you said some things. Okay. No problem. Marissa, you're very, it's, it's very like, no problem. audio. All right, both. Okay, if you can post, yes. if you can post into the uh, chat room so people can read it. That was a powerful piece. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, can we unmute uh, Kristen Sadea, Kay Hernandez? We got Kay, so I'm going to call the names of, this is the last four folks, Kay Hernandez, Andrew Starrett, uh, yes. Michelle Sims Burton and Lakeisha Washington. That's the last four. Okay. In that order, Kay Hernandez, Andrew Scarrett. I wrote in. We can't. Uh, who's speaking? Is, in that, the chat. is that Kay Hernandez? Oh boy. Kay Hernandez? Yes. Okay. Marissa, if you can yes. just mute because mute, it's too choppy. Can so you hear me? Agree. Kay Hernandez, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Oh, you're clear. Thank can you, you guys hear me? Yes, nice and clear. Thank you. Okay, Ooh. awesome. 
Awesome. What are you going to read? What, what genre? Um, I'm in Virginia, and I guess it's uh, autobiographical. Um, can Marissa, if you can just turn your turn your mic off because we are we're up to the next person now that's going to read their piece. Just turn your mic off, please. Can we can we mute everyone, Chris? Actually. She's okay. muted. It must be a latency thing. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, Kay Hernandez, can you hear me? You Go right ahead, please. Yes. And I appreciate you guys being here. I tell you, this is the best two hours I've, uh, of the week for me. And um, my, my first name is Khalil. Okay. I just have Kay up there on my account. Um, my piece is called Sunday Morning. Hmm. Sunday Morning. Yes. Sunday, a very meaningful day for me for a lot of reasons. But the one I want to talk about today is the pancakes and fried apples. Uh -huh. yeah. As a child, Sunday mornings meant freshly cooked salt pork, super crispy to nibble on while we waited from, for from scratch pancakes and fried apples sliced by hand. I was just tall enough to have the top of my head reach the countertop and I'd lean against it on one leg next to my mother as she cooked and fiddled with the dishcloth that hang next to the oven. Mm. Watching the pan or watching my ha or hands, I'm sorry, let me start that again. Watching the pan or yeah. watching her hands or watching her watch me, I fiddled patiently. Mm. Back then you lined a plate with paper grocery bag to drain the excess fat from the cooked salt pork for a while yeah. Yeah. before it was served. Hmm. I'm sure it only took a few minutes time for it to rest there before I was given a piece. I swear it felt like an eternity with me marking the time by how much brown paper bag wasn't soaked with grief. <laughs> Waiting, I could feel the salt on my skin carried with the heat wafting over my face. The stove was hot and my mother was somehow able to watch me closely as she sliced apples and spiced them with cinnamon, a little salt and something else. Oh. To this day, the aroma of bacon and cinema, and cinnamon sends me to a comfortable place where the Sundays are endless and it's always just me and her. Finally, she hands me a piece of salt pork so crisp with the fatty edge, still shiny and plump with fat. Mm. I grab it by the crispy edge. I didn't really like salt pork. I ate it because I was hungry. And she would hand it to me with a look that said that this was the best piece. It was always so strong. The sting from the salt always poked me right in the middle of my forehead. My mother and grandmother made it religiously to keep the masses satiated and out of the kitchen while they cooked. Salt still lingered in the air and mingled with hot cinnamon, turning syrupy sweet. The pancakes were done before I knew it. And even though everyone would sit down to eat, I felt like the meal was just for me with my seat right next to hers and my feet not touching the floor. I forgot everything else, at least for a little while. Whew. Wow. Can we unmute? Can we unmute everyone? Can we unmute, please? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was beautiful. I'm hungry now. <laughs> hey, Hernandez. Uh, that took me right to grandma's house. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Hernandez, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I mean, do you, is, do you write fiction? I do write fiction. Has it been published? That has not been published except for um, on my Medium account. Okay. Now, have you written a book yet? I, I, I have not finished one, and... Um, there are a few that are unfinished. Um, so I'm, I'm working on those. I'm trying to get back to that routine of um, sitting down and actually doing it. So that, that was some of the most descriptive fiction writing that I've heard in a long time. Mm -hmm. Seriously, that was, Thank you so much. wow. 
Um, <laughs> someone just wrote, I, I, I ain't. I don't even eat meat. I don't eat pork. <laughs> someone just said, I, I don't even eat pork, but you know, hey. <laughs> Me so, so you're a fiction writer. Uh, is, is that an accurate assessment? Yes, sir, I am. So mm -hmm. what we need to do to get your fiction out there? Uh, well, I think uh, it's on me to just kind of finish it, you know, and, um, you know, I've, I've been, I'm just kind of uh, coming back from some stuff because um, that piece was inspired by my mother passing. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. I understand. I understand. Take your time. Really, that was just me trying to um, exercise some of my feelings about it. It was such a beautiful homage to your to your mother. That was just some beautiful writing, seriously. Thank you so much. It, it, it was love. Um, is it a short story or is it gonna be a full novel that that is from? Um, well, that's actually a memory. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, cause Kate, are you sure that's fiction? Cause that's my childhood. That's my childhood and my grandmother's <laughs> kid. I'm just saying. Yeah. But, yeah it, really? That's it's, reality. Uh, Wow. The series um, that I'm just kind of labeling a childhood memory series because after her death, um, I mm -hmm. felt so bogged down that I had a hard time thinking about her. So I tried to break it up in small pieces to be able to, mm. you know, just kind of come to terms with her not being here anymore. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Mm. Well, were you in the were you in this workshop last week when we were talking about you know work, writing as healing for us as part of our mental health journey? Were you here last week? I sure was. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's the way to honor our mm. ancestors. That's the way to do it. The people who came before us. Uh, if you have a gift like all of you who have read today, all of y'all who have these incredible gifts. I mean, whether you are experienced or not, whether you've ever read before or not in front of people, I just. Um, just thank you. And I, I, I hope that you keep going because I, I don't even like to compare people to a, you sound like this person, you sound like that person. What I will say, like you and everyone else here sounds like a great writer just waiting to explode out of whatever you got to explode out of. That's what I will say, you know, and that includes you, Kay Hernandez. Just thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, you know, experiencing trauma just yep. kind of made my creativity go dormant for a very long time. And, I, understand. Um, I understand. So I really appreciate all y'all for being here. Yeah, and I mean, just think of all the lives that you will touch as you get this work out there, you know, be it your, your fiction piece or Marissa or Samson's poems or the prologue that's gonna be a book, right, Dr. Kimberly Jenkins, the whole book that you're gonna do. <laughs> And, and the great science fiction series that LaJara is going to do, you know what I mean? And then the great autobiographical essays that, that uh, Evangeline Lawson is going to do. Just all of y'all, just think about how many lives you're going to touch as your work gets out there, you know? Yes. Um, um, that's important. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. please keep writing because we need to hear your stories because in your personal stories, you clearly are touching other people just in this room. So imagine how many more people you'll touch as you get published. All right? Yes, sir. I thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. So we have Andrew Scarrett. Andrew, am I saying your name right? Andrew Scarrett. Um, Michelle, Dr. Dr. Simmons Burton, Michelle Simmons Burton. I want to get that right because y'all who got those PhDs, y'all earned those PhDs. That's, That's right. right. And, and Lakeisha, you're going to close us out. Y'all all right? We still holding on? We holding on. You right. holding on, baby? Keep holding I'm good. on. I'm good. I'm good. I'm blown away by all this genius, like this y'all sharing. Like, wow. Whew. Okay. Um, ready? Andrew, are you there? <laughs> Did we lose Andrew? He had said he was here. Well, you know, uh, Chris Lopez, Andrew was saying he couldn't unmute earlier. Thank you, Kay Hernandez. That was powerful. Thank you. I'm I'm on, yo tengo mucho hambre. Si, yo necesito comer. I'm on a juice fast, y'all, too. So that was real hard to hear Kay Hernandez. <laughs> I was like, yo. I absolutely you know, love it. What day? I'm on day 22. I was having flashbacks to when my mother and I would eat pig's feet straight up. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing. The funniest thing. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Andrew, where you at? What you going to read? What kind of what okay. job? Um, nonfiction, an essay. Awesome. Where are you based out of? Tallahassee, Florida. Florida in the house. All yeah. right. Yeah. Hey. The Final Crossing. 
he emerges in the distance, a shadowy figure set against a fast darkening sky. His gait and his outline are at once unrecognizable and a mystery, reassuring yet disconcerting. We are familiar strangers. Mm. All summer, we share the sidewalk. He walks west, I run east. His stroll home is a compulsory journey. Mine is exertion as exercise. It is my price for a job that requires me to sit all day. I jog for two minutes. I run for two minutes. It is my evening routine. I jog with my eyes on the pavement. Each slab of concrete is a measure of achievement. Mm. To look f- too far ahead is to be dismayed by the distance. It is to be daunted by the challenge. Visually, I can only take one step at a time. It is also a physical limitation. Whenever I com- contemplate m- many steps required of me, whenever I sneak a look ahead, it quenches my will. My jog gives way to a stride, then a stroll. Mm-hmm. My heart rates drop, my mind races. Creative ideas roll around in my mind. Still, I press on in my blue shoes until they become untied. I bend over at the curb. He comes into view. His arms swing, his shoulders sway, his head bobs. He's alone. No dog is tethered to his arm. Mm. Despite the fading light, his approach is unmistakable. He's talky about 200 pounds, five foot four or five. His shoulders are built as if he played high school football. He leans left as if his right shoulder is bigger than his right. His gait is a cross between the cha-cha and a jig. He <laughs> devours the distance between us with a force my aging legs and knees cannot match. I hear his voice. He's singing. He always sings. I have made my conclusions about him. He's on his way home. Songs lift the burden of a long workday. Our encounter is fleeting. The time it takes for, for strides to con- coincide. We usually nod in acknowledgement of each other. We both deploy the black man's code of coexistence, mm. visible to everyone else, but, to, but not to each other. Long after we cross, his cologne lingers heavy in the humid North Florida air. I envy the aroma and strength of his fa- favorite fragrance. He has taken great pains to erase the scent of food from his pores and clothing. He carries a freshness. It is as if he has showered and changed after work. I don't know what he does for a living. I don't know his name. I have constructed a persona in my head. I am no profiler, neither am I psychic. I rely on intuition and observation. He's walking home because he doesn't have a car. He doesn't own a car because he cannot afford to buy one. He cannot afford to buy a car because his job pays too little. Those are my assumptions. They come from the vantage point of my privilege. One Mm -hmm. black man who walks for exercise scorns another black man who walks in order to get home. Nice. Wow. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's good. Gonna, have you been published, Andrew? I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, I, I must confess. I, I must, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that's good. Yeah, I've, I've, I've um, uh, historically, I'm, I'm a journalist, but I've got some essays published in Michigan Quarterly and everywhere, but I've been looking for a writing community when I stumbled, when I stumbled uh, on on this, and I said wow. yes. This, this wow. is right. Thank you. Thank you. And, mm-hmm. Please go right ahead. And this was um, just from running in the evening. There was a guy who kept, you know, and but it's it, it, it's about fifteen hundred words, but and it it sort of deals with the fact that the last I think it was Halloween when it was going to get dark really early. We, I stopped and I asked him who he was. And because you know we had walked by each other all summer without talking, mm. and, wow! And, you know, I had all this, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, wow. so that, that's where that piece came from. It's a really beautiful piece of writing, and oh, thanks. And, and I, I love the, the the use of the body, the bodies as, as imagery in this piece. Um, that piece hasn't been published. No, no. Um, I wrote it, and I usually write stuff and let it sit, and then come back to it. And the amazing thing, I won't, won't take too long. I hadn't seen him all year mm. since, la- since Halloween last year. I hadn't seen him at all. Ran into him while I was running yesterday morning. He said he had hip and knee mm. surgery because he had arthritis. Wow. So he hadn't been so he had me to me home all year. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But did you get it? Do you yeah. know his name now? Yes. Yes. I've, and I've got his phone number too. 
yeah, 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 yeah. His name is Frank. He's like, yo, I'm not Frank close. You're like, I'm not playing. I got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but thanks very much. I, I yeah, yeah, this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, I mean, where's, your, where's your family from originally? I grew up on I grew up on Montserrat. In, in, Montserrat. Um, yes. Wow. wow. And uh, I'm I'm a bison. I I don't want to say too loud, but I'm a yes. But I, I came to go to Howard. Howard is a lot of uh, Howard mm -hmm. University. Well, Hampton University is out there too. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Andrew, um, please keep writing. The poetry of that piece was absolutely striking. You know. Thanks. Thanks. And yeah, yeah. I've got a book on, and I'll I'll post the name of my book. Um, please share the link with us. Yes. It, okay. And um. Um, we should, you know, for the essay block writers out there as well, we should, we're going to talk about publishing. We, we will share some suggestions for y'all over the next couple of weeks of places that you should su submit your work to around the country. Is that cool? And even overseas, yes. all right? Yes. Excellent work. We, we need to hear your voice. That was a great piece of writing. I need a, I, I'm shopping for an agent too, because I've, I've got, I've got stuff. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about the agent world, all of that stuff in the coming weeks for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, Kevin, um, can I say something? This yeah, is Angel. Who's speaking? This is Angel. Hey, Angel. Dr. Angel. Hey. hey. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm really just been sitting back enjoying every minute of this. I feel like I'm watching a show or performance that's, you know, on TV or something. And so I wanted to go back to something that you said that someone said to you in a message about, mm -hmm. you know, this being for certain types of writers and I do want to acknowledge that like there's so many brilliant people that have spoken that I could see why someone might feel intimidated you know because everybody that shared today is really feels really talented and I think that's great and I just want to encourage people you know that regardless of where you are in your writing because sometimes the first people who will will share um, are sometimes the people that, you know, feel most confident about the That's writing true. or who are more experienced or whatever. And so I want to make sure that like, no one, that everybody feels like they can share no matter where they are um, in their writing experience, because we're all here to support each other. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I wrote a little Rinky Dick poem. I'm not going to share it, but I um, don't call it Rinky Dick. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I just wanted to say, oh, no, Rinky Dick. I don't want anybody to feel intimidated because I feel intimidated and I have a PhD. So I'm like, y'all are killing it. So I just to say your, I just say your poem matters. Hey, her name. Right, right, right. That's right. But but you know, Angel, Angel's right because a lot of times the folks. I mean, and I don't. I I don't want to. I I don't know where people's swagger level is, confidence level is. I just think that you know, again, no matter where you are, and this Angel, thank you for saying that because I'm glad you reinforced that. Please know that you know we want to hear your voice. We want to offer feedback. Um, that's the whole point of this space. You know, no matter where you are. Um, and thank you, Angel, for saying that, because, you know, some people may not feel comfortable, you know, or think, as I got the message, but well, these writers are experienced or they're established writers. Um, and that's not necessarily the case today. Some yeah. people they had never read before. Um, but, you know, what, for whatever reason, you know, it came out in a very powerful way. I just think it's a space that's encouraging people to use their voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. so, thank you, Dr. Um, Angel Miles. Um, oh. Who wanted to say something? Was it Angel or someone else? Um. I was the one who asked that question about experience. This is Joyce. Where are you from, at? Joyce? Yeah, Waldorf, Maryland. My hey, hey, Joyce. Hey. Because yeah. um, I'm wondering, how do you become a better writer if it just right. feels like if everyone's so <laughs> right. good Writing. and you right. don't get <laughs> right. criticism, constructive criticism, how can you become right. better? Michelle, Simon, Burton, where were you going to say? I heard you say something. What were you saying? You, you write, you read. You write every day. You read. You just write and read. And you know you send it out when you when you're ready to send it out, but you just don't ever stop writing. Whether you're a publisher or not, you never stop writing. That's right. right. And, and and Joyce, thank you for for stepping up. I didn't want to put you on the spot by saying your name earlier, but thank you for saying that. I I, I echo what Dr. Michelle just said. And all, the second piece is just you, we are not in competition with anyone else. You know, this is your journey. This is your journey for yourself. And you know what I get from other writers. And, you know, we all are in different places. 
were, were you here last week, Joyce, when we with the first workshop? Or this is your first one. No, no, this is the first time. Yeah. The one thing mm -hmm. we said: think about the fact that Toni Morrison did not write her first novel till she was nearly forty years of age. You know what I mean? She spent those years teaching, editing other people, and probably wondering, okay, is this going to happen for me? But then when she did it, because she was not in competition with anybody else, think about the next forty years of her life and what materialized. I mean, she's one of the greatest fiction writers ever. You know what I'm saying? And so writers ever, period. And so I just think you, gotta, you have to start where you are. You know, Walter Mosley, someone quoted mm -hmm. Walter Mosley a few times, but mm -hmm. Hernandez, um, 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 you know, was reading, you know, Walter Mosley, same thing. I mean, he had a corporate job or something like that. Then he got, he, he, he found his voice writing. And so just do it, just do it. Um, I was just told by the New York and it's 930. Um, we have two left, Chris, and we'll be done. Let's say 10 minutes. We're going to wrap this up. Um, is something. that all right? Um, Dr. Michelle and Lakeisha to wrap this up and, and thank you all for holding on. Chris, forgive me, Chris. I just wanted to be fair to everyone. And we're going to. We here. Okay. And we'll, the next we'll, 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 we'll get rolling with the fifteen people a little bit longer because I realize folks want to respond to folks and everything like that. So I apologize. We're still trying to. Can we, can we, can we, can we, can we mute, please? Can we just mute everyone? Um, we'll we'll get started earlier next week because I realize people want to respond to folks and so. But I do want to get 15 people in every week. So we are up to our last two. Dr. Michelle, okay. Simmons Burton, and Lakeisha. Can we I can't hear anything now. Dr. Mich Michelle Simmons Burton. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Yes, All right. Um, two pieces. When I write fiction, I have to first write some form of poetry in order to figure out the character's voice. So. This is Madame Celine Ba, AKA Victor Hugo's Black Lover. In Bridgetown, <laughs> I love don't, don't. in Bridgetown, I stand in this room that I share with my mom and dad, this room that holds all of me and none of Celine. I hide her between daylight and nightfall in the folds of the frog's music, someplace where the space is cracked. Two, how do I know marriage breaks you? I see the gallop leave women's eyes. I smell sex and sour milk on their skin where once oleander and lavender stomped out the mold in fear. I hear the cadence of good morning slither into a good morning, heavy with the weight of other bodies. I feel the ridges on their hands broken from a man's touch. I taste the rotten mangoes on their lips. I tell mom that wifehood cannot claim me, that I'd rather walk into the sea and drink the salty water until I burst. Mom sucks her tongue and says, crazy girl. Wow. That's it. Can we unmute everyone? Can we unmute everyone for a second? Wow. When did you write that? Beautiful. Write that case? Uh, in January, Excellent. when I was in Barbados doing research on Madame Selene Ba, um, a couple of scholars said they can't find her and the archivist told me there are no Ba's on the island. And of course, I found the Ba. I didn't find her, but I think I found her mother. Wow. Barbados, yeah. Barbados is my spiritual home. Are you Bayesian? Are you African-American? Are you just... You're no, I'm, I'm African-American. My dad's great-grandfather is from the Bahamas. But my okay. mother's side, we've been here since the 18th century. Beautiful. I love it. And I love that you... Um, uh, um, evoked history and imagery, which is very rich. Um, what are you going to do with that piece? I'm writing a novel. Excellent. So that's yeah, part this, of the novel then. Well, I'm thinking it is, because at first I was just using it, the poetry as an exercise to figure out who this woman was. But I think I'm just going to put it all in there. I and think And have multi genres. Yeah. I love as Joyce it. Carol Oates says, experiment, don't. So will every chapter start with poetry, then go into fiction? Is that what you're envisioning? I could, yeah. I, I, I could. I haven't figured out how I'm going to organize it yet, but I have both Madame Selene's voice and then Victor Hugo's daughter voice because Madame Selene actually rescued Victor Hugo's daughter. And mm -hmm. then when they write Victor Hugo's history, she gets like maybe three lines. So this is historical fiction. That this is historical fiction. Yeah. That's she really okay. lived. Yeah. That, 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 that's incredible. Wow. But, she, um, but we, but we think her dad's from Trinidad. That's okay. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Cause okay. Bob's not a name that's, um, indigenous to, you know, to Barbados. Wow, wow. Where, where are you at with this this novel? Pro well, probably three-fourths through, because I switched really? to work on another piece. 
Okay. Another yeah, book or something? Another that... book, another book, you know, I write all the time. So you're prolific. No, I just write all the time and don't publish. Can I just say so? Can I just say so, daughters of the dust? Can I just say so, daughters of the dust? Oh like, yes, like, yes. Oh my gosh, I read that. I'm like eased by you. Yeah, oh, yeah, daughters yeah. Two of my favorite films. Yeah. Judy Dash. I'm mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. when you when you the, and and there's so many of those stories of black women, mm -hmm. you know, Geechee women that are like not told. Yeah. Not told. Okay, mm -hmm. so Kimberly, you're from Detroit, right? Yes. Okay, Kimberly, yes. next time you go on the DIA, look up in the at the mural of Diego Rivera and look at that black woman. Mm. All right? Ooh. Yeah. I wrote a story about to... her. Nobody knows who she is. Oh, oh she wow. is. Right? Oh, yeah. She was a maid at the hotel right across the street. That's all I know. Nobody has any records on her. Okay. So, so, so wow. go west, go, go to, go to the southwest side of Detroit, you know, in Lil Mex town. Mm -hmm. And go to in, in, and look at the various mural. Well, I don't, I haven't been home in a long time since, yeah. you know, it's been whatever. But when I was coming up, even in Mexico, because my family, I have a family of Mexicans as well. Uh -huh. um, going down right around the corner from, y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but if you go to Detroit, well, you I know. Area, um, right around the corner from Sociomoco, mm -hmm. there are murals, and in all those little art galleries, mm -hmm. there are also depictions of like Afro, Afro Latina women. Yeah. You understand? And and we don't know who they are. No, don't know who they are. No, no. But they're just assumed as part of the culture. But they're Afro, they're Afro, you know, Latina women that are part of Detroit culture, like mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. Detroit culture, part of black culture, because they're yeah. not when I say Afro Latina, like they're part of us too. Right. And we they're just recognized don't. in both. And they're recognizing both communities, like mm -hmm. separately, separately mm -hmm. in both communities. Mm -hmm. Like to mm -hmm. me, that's the issue. So when you write, like when I'm listening to your writing, it's like a comp. It's like bringing them together. It's like bringing them right. together. We have to. Right. We have to. Yeah. Right. Are, are these murals? Are these mu like huge wall murals in public, um, public dwellings that you guys are talking about in Detroit? Some well, of the them water. are like legal, and some of them are not. And so. Right. In, in certain areas, they'll pop up and then they'll be brushed over and then they'll pop up again and they'll be brushed over. Mm -hmm. And in other areas, they're sanctioned. Mm -hmm. wow. That's interesting because I don't know if you've been to like Chihuahua or Guadalupe, mm -hmm. Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all over. It's all in over various America, different, yeah. uh, all over in Latin America, especially in Mexico, like Chihuahua, and Guadalupe mm -hmm. and all these different cities. They have those those wonderful colorful murals that you're talking about and it shows the mm -hmm. history of african ancestry mm -hmm. within the mexican culture that's awesome y'all my next project, project my next project is a crit walk using <laughs> african, like, I'm just saying, it's a crit walk it's a crit walk using 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 our 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 uh aesthetic as a language of liberation mm. internationally. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what uh, Serena did when yes. she won. <laughs> yeah, she did do that. <laughs> she, she did. <laughs> that was her liberation day. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, I want to be respectful to the. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Well, y'all fine. I love the conversation, but mm -hmm. no, you cool, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. Michelle, can't wait to read that novel. Straight up. Absolutely. Okay, thank wow. you. Wow. That's great. Um, Lakeisha, are you good? You ready to close us out? And yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, I'm good. Okay. So this is not any like structured anything. It was the thoughts that I had after the meeting last week. Mm, that's okay. So um, I started out writing, I fear writing dot, dot, dot. Mm. The emotions that are evoked during the process can be quite overwhelming. But why do I fight the emotions? 
Why am I afraid to fail? What is holding me back? Mm. The anticipations of the deliberations over words and style, the myriad of thoughts and ideas that come to my disposal. Yeah. Or the possibility of none at all. The avoidance of decision fatigue. The indecisiveness and the anxiety that it produces. But what if all of this is a part of the process? Mm. The discomfort evolves into liberation. Yeah. But for the perseverance, what would happen if I stayed with it instead of running away? How about I remind myself that perfection is not the objective, that it should never be the liberation of my soul, my mind, my voice, for this is what it is. Wow. What a way to end this. Wow. Lakeisha, you all right over there? I'm feeling all like hot and stuff and <laughs> perfection. Brother, <laughs> perfection is not the objective. Wow. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. I'm glad that you are using your voice. We need you. As I'm saying to everyone, we need you. How do you feel? Who, me or everybody? You. I feel kind of like liberated just by reading that. Mm. I felt liberated when I wrote it. So now there's another layer of liberation to this piece. And I really want to go and like explore it more and write more about it mm. and feel more, feel more. And like, just, I want to feel. You want, I want to feel. Yeah. Cause like I hold back. Mm. Because sometimes emotions can be overwhelming. Can I may I ask a question? Because I didn't, I missed it, and forgive me if I missed it. What's the, did you have a title for that piece you just read? I just wrote "I Fear Writing" with the three dots next to it. I That's also, I, mm -hmm. I also love what you just said. I want to feel. I think that would be a powerful title. Those are your words. I'm just giving it back to you. You just said it, and I'm like, that would be a powerful title for it. Okay. I want to feel, because that's what that piece is about to me. Um, fighting through these things to get to our voice. And Joyce, you see what we're saying? Um, I hope clearer now because people are at different space, places of expression as well, you know? Um, but we are getting through it. And, and, and let me make it clear to Joyce, to Keisha, uh, I'm sitting here now very comfortable speaking with you all. It was not always the case. Trust me on that. I would, I would mute myself all the time. And if I did speak, I would speak really fast to try to get out of the way and just because I didn't think that what I had to say was all that important. You know what I mean? Um, and so you have to grow into that. And like Dr. Michelle said, that comes from reading, that comes from writing, but I also think it comes from, you know, even though it took a little longer than we anticipated tonight, that's all right. We're holding on, you know, those of us who, who got the time to do it, because it's important for us to share our voices and to listen to each other. You know what I mean? In community. I appreciate you, Lakeisha. Thank you. I appreciate all of y'all. Y'all all right? Next week is going to be called Writing Poetry. And even if you don't call yourself a poet, I'm asking y'all all please come anyway, because we're going to be talking about metaphors, alliteration, all these different things. Don't consider it homework, uh, to borrow Legere's uh, term. We're going to call it play work, uh, which is we're going to write three haikus five syllables, seven syllables, a second line, and five syllables, play work. Just, just try it. You know, those of us who use can't tonight, am I right, Andrew? We shouldn't have can't in our vocabulary. Can we unmute everyone? Because Andrew wants to say something. I'm sorry, Andrew. Or home play. Someone said Jan home play. Andrew, I can't hear Andrew. I've already written one high cool already. Tonight? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, did <the> yeah. <laughs> you did your play work. You did your play yeah. work. Yeah. So I want to I want to just thank y'all again for 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 um, three high schools and three subjects that happened this year. Challenge yourselves to write short stuff. Um, I'm going to bring in some sample poems that we're going to share next week on the screen of some poets of different backgrounds, different gender identities, all of that that I think are important for us to to, to look at as some examples of how to master poetry. 
because I actually think poetry will help you if you write plays, screenplays, science fiction, historical novels, all of it. You know, we heard examples of it all, so many of the works tonight, just beautiful poetry. I see you, Eartha Watts Hicks, are you cool? I wanna shout out the Harlem Writers Guild, one of our historic, historic literary organizations in the country, Harlem Writers Guild, much love to y'all. Thank, um, you. thank, thank you. you, no thank you. I wanna thank the New York and Post Cafe, Chris Lopez and Sadea James, my teammate for holding on uh, past uh, 47 minutes past our time. What we're gonna do from now on, uh, Sadea, let's, let's just remember to do this. We're not going to um, go over the previous week's workshop. Uh, we'll just we'll we'll share it with folks uh, in the chat room. Just copy and paste it so you can see the notes for the previous week. All right? Because there's certain buzzwords that you all shared that I'll put out there. And just thank y'all. Um, I'm sleepy and I'm thirsty. So <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just close our eyes for 30 seconds and just you know silently let's just thank whoever we thank you know and for for this opportunity to share community the whole space together. Ashe, and thank you. Um, Thank you to 15 folks who shared. Wow, just wow, just wow, just wow. I'm a writer. Good night. I'm a writer.